Hello everybody and welcome to episode lucky 13 of meeting of the monster houses. Last time, you almost fucking died. <laughs> Cuz ogres are hard. I feel like that happens every other week. Um but you you did manage to succeed through uh some lucky fucking uh lucky fucking luck, I guess. Yes, lucky luck. Mm -hmm. Makes we sense. got that lucky luck. You collected some shrooms, you've saved the town of East Cliff, and now you are free to do as you wish. We're also sick. Yeah. Are we, we still down in the mine shaft? Uh, you, you guys no. are. <laughs> no. You guys ah, okay. left, the, left the thing. I'm assuming we need to head back to. Uh... My guys are wrong, we still have to like, report in that we did the thing. Are we sure we uh, completed everything, though? I mean, I mean, did we cure it? I mean, there's still people sick. I mean, we oh, found the our... cause of it. Yeah, our job wasn't to cure it. Fair enough. Just to find the cause and stop it. Stop it. It's just... But I don't recall, unless the DM can uh, remind me otherwise, I don't recall actually seeing anywhere where the mine uh, connected to the, uh, no. the well cave. <laughs> Nope. The, so, mine so had, that the, the, yeah, the mine had nothing to do with anything. It was uh, really because the they said they struck riches and then all all of a sudden disease. No, no, they they I dug a new well water. in the center of their town. They didn't. They, it had nothing to do with the mine. Oh, okay. It was it was there everything was to do with the, the well. Water and okay. it came from the ogres. I like how focused you guys were on the mine, but it, it really had no consequence. Hmm. I mean, the mine just seems suspicious, and I guess we're insisting about the mine. There's here. always a mine. Uh, did I we mean, actually we go did. down the well, or no? Yeah, yes. Did. We did. I did not trust we, someone someone jumped died. down the well, cough, cough. <laughs> yeah, you basically, like, Mission impossible yourself down the well. And then there was, like, 17 undead shit with a bunch of spells that they were casting. Well, I'll boost everyone up out of the well. I was out of the well before you guys. Hey, fuck you. I scrammed. <laughs> I, I scrammed when I went down to 5 HP. Yeah, but guess who's a fucking trooper and doesn't take shit? Excuse me, I have 5 HP. So did I! Say and that, I Matt, can... but literally, you and I are the only ones here that have any kind of sustainability. Dude, I was... I, well, I mean, we have a barbarian in the party now, that's that's very untrue. Mm -hmm. And also a cleric. Okay, before Tarvos. Speaking of Tarvos, I need to actually have his character sheet now because he's not here well um he also do a scottish accent okay. well by the time we get back to town my new bow should be done so if y'all want to just head back now i'm fine with that <sighs> hopefully by that time this fucking sickness will be cleared up Don't worry, I'll make extra hot soup just for you. I mean, all I need to do is not cast anything for a week. So I guess that's a no on the soup then? I'll take the soup. That's what I thought. <laughs> Alright. There you go. Very good. <clears throat> so, you guys are heading toward... back toward Idras takes you a week to get there, so hey. it's gone by the time you get there. But well, it's uh, half time because Cart remember, so yeah, yeah that, that also. Well, actually, then the spell plague would not be gone. Thank, you. Thank you for reminding me. So it's actually How only only about. Uh, I've been muted. I've been talking. All right, awesome. <laughs> there you go. So yeah. three, Matt, you're the kid in class days. that reminds the teacher about the homework. Yeah, no, fuck you. Stay diseased. Cut. Um, does anybody have? A piece of copper wire I could borrow. Uh, what? If you're, I'm fairly certain if you recall, if spell yeah, is really how it works, you don't want to be doing any magic at all. Fair. Have any kind. Also, any uh, kind? Uh, just healing. out of awesome. character, you can use your spell casting focus for your materials. You don't, you don't have have uh, copper wire. Right. Unless oh. They, unless they have a a specific gold cost to them or they're used up by the spell you don't need the uh, 
It's the beauty of being a man. It's the beauty of being a caster. So, and when I use, cleric, you just need your holy symbol. Yeah. So when I used my spiritual weapon down there, um, I didn't feel anything until I tried to cure myself, and then I felt something. So I think it's just healing magic. That's actually, actually it's it's when you cast anything. Listen, healing you magic. Probably just be on the safe side. Besides. We're if you have the spell plague, if you have tell, the spell plague and you cast magic, it hurts. If you try to heal yourself, it hurts worse. Fair. Okay. Listen, okay. If we just stay on the down, if we just stay on the down low. Take it easy for the rest of the week. We're fine. You just have to. You just have to not cast anything, and it'll clear. All right. Do I need to keep rolling for food, or is the, is like food done? Basically. That basically done. I mean, yeah, you, nice. you guys have an outlander in the party, so. It's, yeah, I, if, I literally even can if it wasn't. provide food for us indefinitely. <laughs> you, you made two outlanders in a row? No. No. Roth was a hermit. Oh, yeah, right. Disgusting. You. <laughs> <laughs> I, the reason why I can still provide for everybody was the fact that I was a ranger. <laughs> uh. Wait, do Listen, I have friggin' my backup as an outlander? My outlander? favorite terrain is Swamp. Swamp up full of Shrek. Alright. Is that their Outlander or Haunted? I don't know. Either way, you can get food. It doesn't matter. I'm not gonna even make you worry about it until Grisha dies. Oh. So, on the way back from East Cliff to Idras, um, those of you afflicted by the Spell Plague before it goes away, uh, do not have access to your highest level spells. How does so that I don't work? have access to spells. I can't cast magic. Well, I'm pretty sure you can cast second level spells. Uh, no. I don't have second level spells. The way it works is it eats your highest level spell slots each day. Now, because Warlock <sighs> only has its highest level spell slots, <laughs> it have doesn't no have magic. magic. Can we can only cast can cantrips? So if you don't cast magic, then that's how it works. But if you do, then you take necrotic damage that's irreversible. I mean, does it count with cantrips? Yes. Yes, it does. I so... Oof. Oof. Magic. Yeah, you're I, literally any, stuck to being just any stabby form. Magic. You basically have to starve both yourself and the disease of all magic. I am just stuck with Goldbrand, then. Yeah, you're Unless basically a fi you're until further notice you're basically a fighter. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm unable to even summon gold brand. It's fine. You have four days once you get back to Idras to worry about uh, casting spells. So, uh, you back to Idras. so nothing happens in between uh, there and Idras. Uh, no, no, you guys. It's smooth sailing, um, mostly because you've ran through all of the random encounters that I have for land travel at this point. So. Nice. Hey. So, on your return to Idras and your return to the Crooked Crow Inn and Tavern, um, you have a uh, horse waiting for you at the bar. I see you have returned. And I didn't die this time, almost. Yes, you did not die, that is apparent. Although you do not look particularly well. I don't really feel well. Uh, okay, well. Uh, yeah, we figured out. It it was spell plague over there. I'll try to stay out of contact with people, eh? We don't want an outbreak in the city. That's true. Yeah, we'll... Don't worry, we'll be okay in, in three or four days or so. In the meantime, the uh, the boss is away, but he will be back tomorrow to tomorrow, discuss. Okay. I'll, uh... Yeah, hello. Alright. <sighs> so, can you guys want? You have a day to do whatever you need. Otherwise, right, we'll just go ahead. Um, I'm kind of poor at the moment, so I'm just going to follow what everybody else does. Let's see, how much my I got? 222 gold? I. <laughs> I can't go in contact with people. Whoever's Great. listening to Cauliflower Guy in the background, shut that shit up. <laughs> Cauliflower Guy. I'm gonna use that for at some point. But 
<clears throat> yeah, I can't come in contact with people, so I, I guess I will just stay in my room. We need to isolate him. We can put caution tape on the door. <laughs> Quarantine. I'm just gonna go in my room too and just take a nap, lay down. I'll buy them rooms since, you know, barkeep. Sure. Uh, uh, it's one silver per room, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. I'll just pay for everyone, which is six of us, so. Cool, we all are all paid for. You guys basically got like the employee discount. Nice. When it comes to rooms. Alright, so um if anyone if no one else is doing anything for a day other than bumming around the tavern. Hey, uh, uh Orion. Who? Go ahead. I I uh, wanted to apologize about the whole crown thing. No problem. <laughs> um, in my room, can I pray? Like before I before I go to sleep, sure. I mean, pray. listen, I've been uh, sticking around you weird people for how long now? I just kind of get used to it at this point. Just, uh, don't do it again. I just had a thought, like, out of character. Yes. Say someone's been charmed by an enemy. Mm-hmm. Could you use Crown of Madness to make them go back to attacking the enemy again? <laughs> Possibly. No. You can, you can the charm a person. Charm charm. Yeah, being charmed does not the mean all... you are blocked from the rest of charmed. You just... The old Uno reverse card. Yeah. Ye <laughs> old Uno reverso. Mm, no, you. <laughs> I, 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 I got, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna have it at some point. I just noticed that Uno is an anagram for no you. Mm -hmm. Or not an anagram, but like, you know, the letters are mixed up. So, no, Uno's that's, reverse that's, that's card. An you could also say no you reverse card. It's a palindrome, I think. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like this new discovery. No, so it is. A, you're right. It is an anagram. If it was a palindrome, then it would be backward forward. Yeah. Anyway. Um. So yeah, if you guys don't have anything to do for a day, you can stick around and wait for Carver to get back. Um. You do. Yeah. Some of you do have mushrooms that you have no idea what they do. So you could go and discover. What <laughs> Not touch no. Oh wait. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Well, uh, and then maybe get these mushrooms checked out. That's right. Really wait, mushrooms. Them. Uh, looks at looks at nature proficiency. Mm -hmm. Except that these are not natural mushrooms, so you would not know anything about them. Um, uh, looks at arcana proficiency. There you go. Also, would identify. I work told you on magical <laughs> like life. Identify, yeah, sure. If it has magic to it, which you know it does, then yeah. I I know a guy. I'll just take mine. Mushroom to the shop. You have your own. I also need to go get my bow anyway. Uh, fucking. Where did I put the mushrooms? Here they are. Okay. So one of us is rolling an arcana check, one of us is going to identify it with identify spell, yeah. and then one of us is going to a professional to identify it. If we don't yes, know, we're like, going, fucking we're going through entire all the entire history. I'm gonna be well, a little I mean, upset. Uh, to be fair, I should. I'm technically a professional at identify. Now 20, here we go, boys. Learning pretty much everything that is magical about it. VG, it's happening again. If I can, what, who, do you roll the natural 20? I roll natural <laughs> 20. Okay, cool. They are definitely magical, and they are definitely not natural mushrooms. Huh. Uh, That's weird. But unless you have identify, you have no idea what the fuck these things can do. Now, Grisha, uh, <laughs> uh, you don't get much else either, other than the fact that they have... Uh, they, they, f their magic is a fluctuation effect on them. It changes every few seconds. 
while you're identifying it. it makes it hard to pin down but mostly the the feelings you get from it have things to do with abjuration and enchantment I care also identify let me identify like point pick out the spell plague if someone had if I cast on someone who had it if you cast it on someone who had it it would tell you that they had spell plague mm-hmm Beyond that, uh, well, actually, technically, technically, no, because it's not a magical effect. It is a disease. So detect poison and disease mm -hmm. would do it, but not identify. No, okay. I was just checking. Uh, so anyway, you you do not get a concrete, um, a concrete feeling of what the mushrooms can do in their current state. Huh. <laughs> I forget the store name. Uh, it was Embryalo Chemical. Is the new is the newest alchemist alchemist shop that you heard about? Oh, I was gonna take, oh yeah, I'll take uh, I'll dude. take the mushrooms there. Mm, is my he said a week to a week and a half? Is my bow finished? I'm gonna check that out first. I think. Uh yeah, it would be. You spent yes. the money to you spent like a bajillion dollars on the scope, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now. Officially, your longbow is plus one to attack and damage rolls. Fucking savage. Sweet. And if I ever swiped it, I can make I can make it into my pack weapon. Nope, because it's not a magic weapon. Ah. Uh, it is just fuck. really, really well made. <laughs> Hyper enhanced. Fuck I your magic! Those. I got technology. Dang. Amen, brother. Uh, while I'm there, I'll ask if he knows the fuck this mushroom is, and I assume he shakes his head, he's not a mushroom shop. Sure, so he is, um, when you walk in, he's, uh, a human shopkeep with, uh, like, blonde hair and a blonde, uh, like, pointy, like, chin beard. Um, he's wearing, uh, what appears to be spectacles and a headband on his head to keep his long, uh, blonde hair out of his face while he's working. Um, and he's wearing like a really thick leather apron and thick leather gloves um, on him as he's mixing chemicals in the back. Um, he says, uh, hey, "Hello there." Hi. I uh, uh, you might want to be careful with this one. We found it in a cave with a bunch of undead. Oh, goody. Well, let me take a look then. He goes to take a no. look at the mushroom. He's like, "Well." Well, this is interesting. I've never seen anything like this before. Hmm. Do you mind if I take a sample for testing? No, not at all. Okay, so he goes and he goes uh, and chops up the mushroom and then begins to, um, like, mix it in with a bunch of different chemicals. Okay. He, uh, brings back, um, the remaining mushrooms, and he's like, "This is—it's a very odd plant you've found yourself with. Where did you manage to find this again?" Uh, in a cave full of undead in East Cliff. In East Out Cliff, of character, I'm gonna scream at you for a second, VG. What? Mushrooms are not plants. I'm fucking fine. I know. What? Screw you. Listen, <laughs> they're an entirely separate thing. I've had ten hours of sleep in three days. Give me some slack. It's a mushroom. He knows where he's and he's like, okay, cool, great. I know where to find it. Um, Sorry, I had I, a biology teacher. If you don't mind, I, I'm not entirely sure how to do anything useful with this at the moment, but if you leave it with me overnight, I'd be willing to study it for you, and if I come up with anything, you'll get it for free. Hmm. Sounds do fine it. by me. I don't think I'll uh, have any other need for it. Just thought it was interesting. I thought you'd like to see it. Oh, excellent. Oh, this is so exciting. It's not every day you discover a brand new species, especially one that's fueled by magic. Very interesting. Thank you so much for bringing this to me. No problem. He he's like drops everything he's doing and starts working on these mushrooms. Yes. I'd like to point out that if you had actually performing that to yourself like certain you probably have gotten some recognition I mean kind of do you think I care? fair 
don't know if Orion cares about being uh, in like Scientists Monthly. Some recognition. Um. Okay, cool. So there you no go. No one's gonna get that reference. So, um, uh, if no one else has anything else to do, then a day passes. You'll wake up in the next morning. Um, and as you head downstairs, the, uh, the tavern is still closed and Carver's waiting for you uh, at one of the tables. Walk downstairs. Ward boss. <sighs> Hello there. Seems you've come back from your little mission there. <sighs> yep, I didn't die this time either, so... And I heard uh, you've huh. been very successful, you and your group. Yes, uh, so we kind of found something uh, from the whales. There is some shit down there. Like actual uh, shit, like, or was it? Like, no, no, exactly? not like, uh, more like giant fucking ogres that are undead and wanted to kill me. Oh, well... That was something yeah. I was not expecting. And then, um, they found some weird mushrooms, and I was like, I ain't touching that shit, so they have them. So if you want to take a look at them, you don't have to wait for them to come downstairs. I think I'm fine. That's what I've I already said. told, I uh, I've already told Durin and Avora about our little excursion up to their city. They're quite pleased with us. Well, that's good. I think I got the um, sickness because I haven't been feeling that great. And then tried to heal myself. Kind of fucked me over a little bit more. Yeah. I'm just happy it doesn't affect non-magical people. Yeah. Hopefully this goes away soon so I can actually use my fancy spells. Either way, probably a good idea to stay here for the remainder of your, uh, your sickness. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. There's two other magical users, I think, on the party. I think they might get sick too, so I'm not too sure. In the meantime, I'll be working another angle. Another one of my colleagues on the Seven has been losing ships recently on the way to Gorgon House and back. Mm. So, I might be sending you on a little boat mission soon. We'll see. Oh, not again. All right. In the meantime, keep your heads low. Stay low, got it. We're very close to a big score here, Grid. Right. Keep up low. What if, what if we can't? What if we can't get our heads high in the first place? I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. You're oh too shit! Short. <laughs> You're too short to, to fit my eye line. I really want to do pale voice. Uh, if you can't keep your head low, at least try and stay out of monetary trouble. I'll try. Right. <laughs> kind of a wing to him. So, are we going to Gorgon House? Possibly. I'm not sure, but uh, I'll, that, have a, like... I'll be having a talk with the Admiral in uh, a couple of days. Try and figure right. this thing out. Well, I'm probably just going to follow these knights, so. Wherever they go, I guess I'll go. So. Well, you still can do that whole. Talking in my head shit, yeah? I can't. You can talk to me, and I can respond, but I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't do Sorry, it I, I can do that. I'll do it, then. If you uh, give you some updates or something. Whatever you feel like it's necessary. I'm gonna go uh, back to my duties. Will do. I'll most likely still be here, <laughs> so... Okay. He heads out the back door. Okay. To the tavern out into the streets. Um, and as he does, you see that uh, when he steps outside, there is um, a big, burly man with a bald head, uh, shaven bald with like tattoos on his face, wearing uh, black colored armor and a black cloak, um, waiting for him outside. And then Do I proceeds to follow him as he goes. This is a, it's a bodyguard of his. Oh, okay. Well, can I get um one of those things that you made made up? What? Talking to the horse. Talking to 
Oh, of course. Oh, sandwiches? <laughs> Can I get one of those fancy things that you made? Like, you know, with the, the bread and the bacon, all that, you know? Actually, I have been really, I've been trying to test this thing out for a while now. I think I found a way to make it into a breakfast food as well. It basically gives you, you a breakfast me. sandwich, just like eggs on toast with like tomato and bacon. Mm. Oh my Kenrick. fucking god, dude, you're like an actual Kenrick. god. <laughs> Kenrick comes down at the smell of food. <laughs> well, it's not delicious. Smell going on down here. I don't know, he made a new thing. He made a new thing and it's fucking delicious. He made another new thing. Then I'll eat it. Alright. How much for this one, horse? Uh, for you, as a test subject, it is free. <laughs> Let's dig allow into me it. To be a allow me to be a test subject any day of the week. Sure. We, uh, I'm, I'm experimenting in the kitchen these days, and I find that it is calming to my nerves. Also, should this, uh, this barkeep job ever not pan out, I could always open a restaurant, I suppose. Dude, you can help open a restaurant. I have a friend of mine whose name is Jared, who would be really interested in opening up business with me. Shh. <laughs> 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 I'm going to kill you one of these days. <laughs> Uh, 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 the mastermind behind Subway is some fucking barkeep from a far off fantasy land. You so much. <laughs> I like how I'm just doing like brand integration into this whole section of the map. It's beautiful. Like we've got Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> Dude, I want another one of the ice cream cones. Dude, I want to go back to Ben and Jerry's and get another fucking mint chocolate chip. <laughs> next next episode we all disown we all disown him we all all of us disown do that's, <laughs> that's the episode oh man we all headed to the mountains to become mountain and start a new campaign uh, <laughs> i swear the moment i see dairy queen i'm fucking leaving because i'm not going to live in goddamn fantasy anymore. The first McDonald's I see you went right in there. No, no, I mean, it's probably not going to be a franchise, but I may or may not have a female Minotaur set up somewhere in the world named the Dairy Queen. <laughs> oh, female Minotaur set up what? Somewhere in the world. <laughs> Alright, Kenrick, you gonna, we gonna wake everybody up or are we gonna let them sleep? Uh, you know... Oh, wait, is this the next day? Yeah. Oh, shit, not bad. <laughs> Yeah. We could let him sleep. Come back. Wait, who are we letting sleep? I mean, it'd be pretty funny to write on the face with charcoal. Aye. I'll just eat breakfast and read a book. Because I got the book on me that I can read. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm going to go ahead and, like, blot out my, my last will and testament <laughs> that I wrote last session. <laughs> <laughs> If it I die, tense moment. I, I have one HP. <laughs> if I die, please loot my corpse. And it's more like I, it's more like I want my mom to have my bow. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I want my mom to have my bow and all my weapons. <laughs> Woof. Alrighty. <sighs> okay. <sighs> so again, you have about you have about a day. Before we continue on with actual stuff, so if you want to do anything, now's the time. Mm. I'm gonna go. Well, he said he get right on on it, so I'm gonna assume he's made at least some progress on shrooms. Oh yeah, so I'm, not, I'm gonna follow him outside. I'm gonna go with him. So uh, at this point, roll me a d12, Matt. Oh, disgusting. Here we go, boys. Uh, oh no. While I try and find where I put them again. I'm gonna follow Orion. No, oh, sorry, hold on. Let me go with you, mate. Three. Sorry. You. Uh, fucking D7. Not a D7. Hey, nice. I was thinking of a different grid. D7. One. Cool. Ow. Pain. So, um, you see, uh, Mr. Embriel, the shopkeep, um, is very excited when you walk in. Oh, I've completed something. 
Um, not entirely sure uh, what else I could have done with it, but it seems as if the magic has a life of its own, and depending on how this is prepared, you get different effects from it. So, this is what I came up with so far, and he has like a, um, like a conical, uh, potion yeah. bottle that's corked at the top with a, uh, light purplish liquid in it. Oh, I want to drink that. Oh, it's disgusting. It also, uh, in, inside the light purplish liquid. I just noticed him following me, I'm like, what inside... the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> I followed you, did you not see me? He came with you when you left. I wasn't paying attention! Fair enough. <laughs> Obviously not. Um, inside the purple liquid also there's a layer of black, like, gunk at the bottom. Ooh. For lack of a better term. Um, he takes the bottle and swirls it around and that light purple becomes a very, very deep purple. So this, if I'm not mistaken, should give you the ability to see in the dark for about an hour. What if I can already see in the dark? <laughs> and it increases that factor. I did ah. test this out with a friend of mine. You drank it? Yeah. Well, like, yes, we have to test new potions somehow. So what if it, what if it drank it? And what if it kills you when you drank it? <laughs> uh, apparently, he said it tasted like mushrooms. I don't know. Like liquid mushrooms. You think, could Does these mushrooms, mushrooms like... mushrooms on a regular basis? <laughs> <laughs> could these uh, mushrooms, like, you know, create undead magical creatures? I don't know. Like, po I like poke the potion. All I know is that it makes this sometimes. There were other effects as I was testing it, but none of them lasted for very long. Could it cause a spell plague? What? The spell plague. Could it cause that? No. Uh, it's not a. It's not a disease. Oh. It's a fungus. Where the hell do those monsters come from? It's a disease that is charged by magic. Or, sorry, it's it's a fungus that is charged by magic. Sorry, the mushrooms are. I mean, technically, mm. this public is a disease is charged by magic. It's that, so that technically wasn't inaccurate. Uh, the disease eats magic. It is not charged by magic. So it might have been eating these mushrooms. Uh, eating, charging, same diff. Yeah, that's <laughs> what do you uh, uh, recommend the lifespans on these mushrooms? Uh, I'm going to look over them here. Well, uh, you did say I could have a... Uh, some of the findings so is that bottle for me yes it is absolutely and if you'd like i'd buy the rest off of you uh for further testing of course well, i only brought that one with me but i don't know how much one entails i just added one to my inventory so it's a potion of dark vision gives you 60 feet of dark vision for an hour or if you already have dark vision it increases that by 60 feet for an hour cool oh it's like 120 is there anything in this shop that I can like fuck with I don't know probably there's shit tons of like beakers and ingredients and stuff oh. he's also right there all. and you are the only ones oh, in the yeah. store cause yeah it's yeah <laughs> I'm not gonna try anything I with him here well, I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, that's all the mushrooms I got. I do have some friends who have some, though. Well, let them know I'd I'll be look. willing to buy their stock. I'm extremely interested in what these can do. Is there any way you could replant them? Uh, possibly. I haven't tried. They were growing on rocks. I'm not sure. I'd probably have to recreate the conditions in which they were made. Uh, a really crappy well with a lot of corpses around. Okay, Dead well, things. In that case, I'll have to try and grow them in the back room. There's also <laughs> water running from it, so there's a lot of water on it. <laughs> oh, no, it's not what you think. I, I food scraps, mostly. To feed okay. the fungus that I already grow here. I'll, I'll take your word for it. Mmm. Um, so he, if you want, he'll buy the rest of the mushrooms off of you for 50 gold. Yeah, I'll, I'll let y'all two know. Or I guess I'll let, uh... How much I, gold? 50. 50. 50 from the, whatever is remaining from Orion, which is about half. So one, one mushroom he's gonna buy for 100 gold. Oh, okay. Why? One full Can mushroom. Use that? 
Yeah, and you had one. I just thought. Yeah. Would any of these kinds of mushrooms grow in the ca in any caves up north? You've never seen these before in your life. These uh, are brand new mushrooms that no one has ever seen before, hmm. to your knowledge. Well, I don't know much you're on, but I'm going to go to Rolls Rods. I've been wanting to go there ever since it opened. Well, you can go ahead and go. Oh, I'm not going to come from the It's just, it's just a cane store. Yeah, this is totally just a cane store. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make my way to Rolls Rods by myself, I guess. Okay. Cool. Take, take the elf with you. The what? The elf. Yeah, I'm asking you if you want to come with me. No, no take the damn elf. I don't want to go. Uh, what, else you want to take the, you wanna take the quarantined elf? Take the ladyboy with you. Uh, How dare you call Kenrick a twink? <laughs> going uh, into a place called Rod's 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 Is he wrong? Yes. <laughs> I mean, you uh, you and another male are going into a place called Rod's Rods. It's a cane store. Definitely just a cane store. <laughs> oh. And nothing else. Oh. You don't know, you've not been there before. You know what? If it's good enough, I'll tell Kenrick about it. <laughs> so, those of you who are actually going to Rod's Rods, open the door. And uh, and it is actually just a cane store, uh, from what you can tell. There are numerous wooden, metal, wooden and metal canes, sword canes, all sorts of different designs of like um, royal canery <laughs> that line the walls of this shop. Um, and the titular rod is uh, sitting um, in the the back of his shop on a uh, a grinding wheel. Um, polishing off uh, the, uh, I guess, the shaft of one of his canes that he's making. Mm -hmm. um, and you walk in, he says, Hello! Well, aren't oh. you just a special oh, little friend? Of course you give him this voice! Oh. oh. Hello? Wow, you are such a strong man. Here, hold on. Let me give you uh, give you something real quick. <laughs> he, uh, he looks, okay. he, he like grabs like a uh, like a cane and hands it to you. Says, "Here, hold this real quick." Uh, okay, I hold the cane. <laughs> okay, it's like a it's like a black and silver cane. Says, "Yes, this is perfect for you." VG, what are you doing to us? <laughs> I don't know if I need a cane, mate. I can kind of walk fine with that one, but uh, I can probably fucking beat somebody with it. I can like swing it. <laughs> well, that's the thing. They're just they're functional, and also they look great on you. Oh my god, VG, I love you and I hate you. <laughs> you know what? I think I got a mate. I got a swing to give. Probably want a cane. I'm gonna bring him back here. I'm gonna hand him the cane and leave the store. Well, if you're interested, we also have a few specialty items that I make in the back. I wanna go get Grisha and I'll be back. <laughs> Oh, wait, you're not. Wait, you're gonna get Grisha and not and not the oh, come on. You gonna leave Kenrick out of Rod's Rod? It goes to a very flamboyant name. I don't know, guy Kenrick, not Grisha. Sorry, not <laughs> Kenrick. Sorry. It goes for the only female. I'm gonna go back to the end, and I'm gonna go um upstairs, Kenrick's room. Mm. I'm gonna yeah, fucking I'll... kick down the door. <laughs> um. Kenrick is in the middle of trying to fix his now really short hair, and he's sad about it, because his hair is gone. <laughs> his hair looks like fucking Farquaad's hair if it was lit on fire. And <laughs> oh! Yeah, it's not good. He's very sad. I kind of like point at her, at her and like, Kenrick, I got some shit for you. It's a cool store, it's got rods. You and they got rods? some special shit. Hold on. Said, wait, wait, wait. Second, got... <laughs> you know Kenrick is a dude, right? Oh, is he got... okay, right. Yeah, <laughs> he just looks like a, an effeminate person. Oh. He's Kenrick, just no. very skinny. Elves are all twinks. Isn't this, isn't this established? No. Grisha, We're going to Rod's Rods. Grisha's Come on. Grisha's the only female in the party. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, everyone else is a dude. Kenrick, we're going to Rod's Rods. Let's go. Come on. No questions asked. We're going. Um. Alright. Sure, why not? I go to Rod's Rod. 
Uh, hello Nick. and welcome back. How are you two doing? Oh, I see you've brought your friend with you this time. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Can I can oh. slap, I slap him on the back? How about it? And I fucking. <laughs> um. Hello? Hmm. I've not had the pleasure of servicing an elf before. This will be interesting. Oh my. Oh. <laughs> I am gone. I am going back to the inn. <laughs> um. Um. Alright. Um, hello? Let's see. He's like, he's looking you over. He's being very, he's like in your personal bubble, uh, very uncomfortably so, and he's looking you over. Mm, little um, scrawny this one, but that Wait, 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 okay. you said looking? Yeah, looking. <laughs> just looking. Just looking. For a second, it, it sounded like you said licking, and I was like, like oh no! Yes, he's licking your arm. Up and what are you doing? Mm, it's not content, okay. <laughs> No, uh, he's looking at he's looking at you and like taking mental measurements. It looks like. Mm. For a second, I thought you were pulling a full Hisoka. I expected you to be taller, honestly, for an elf, but that's okay. We can oh, work I mean, around this. All right. I mean, um, well, actually, the high elves are taller than I am. Um, that's fine. I'm, a, I'm thinking, Rubalt. Hear me out, and mahogany. This is going to be so good. And he, he immediately runs into the back to like rummage around for stuff for a second. Um, a couple of seconds later, he comes out with a mahogany shafted <laughs> cane <coughs> um, with the head shaped like an eagle, um, or sorry, a griffin, uh, that is made of this like uh, copper red material. Don't griffins and eagles have the same kind of head because a griffin is basically just an eagle with a lion body. Yes, Shush. but but specifically, griffins have a weird like head shape in D and D. They have like the weird like eyebrow feather things that owls have. Oh, yeah. So he like hands you this cane that's like this. It's like a a dark brown wood with a, a kind of copper tipped thing. He hands it to you. That is perfect. So so fabulous. Well, I must say, this is very well made. Well, thank you. I take very much pride in my work. Actually, well, speaking of your work, my friend actually mentioned something about special canes and the... Oh, you want to see the special collection? I mean... Follow uh, me! I'll be, <laughs> I'll be lying if I didn't say one to you. He's I like, fucking love this voice he's like, so point, goddamn. Point, he's like... He's like he like he turns a finger. He like points at you with his index finger, turns his hand upside down, and then curls it in like a come here gesture and walks oh, into the back. Oh, good lord! VG, <laughs> VG, you saucy man! You're the one who said you wanted to see the specials, all right? You right? We go. We doing this, boys? All right. I follow Rod. All right. So in the back, um. Ross says, okay, here are the specialties. And he takes his hand and puts it on a curtain that's on the wall and moves the curtain aside. And on a display rack are several other different canes. These ones are um, slightly larger than the rest. And it becomes apparent when he takes one off the wall and then takes the head off of it that it is a sword cane, specifically. Um, and he, uh, he quote unquote opens a couple of them. Um, to say, okay, so we have several varieties. We have regular ones, mundane, and then we have uh, special materials as well. Uh, over here, I have a nice spirit brass number. This is good for hunting down ghosts or other such uh, incorporeal weirdos. I sell a couple of these to the uh, the Ranger Corps, but they don't like to talk about me, and I don't know why, because I'm so excited to sell to them. Um, we've also got, like I said, Rubalt over here. Um, and then we also have, because I just got my license recently, I have some enchanted numbers. Mm. You have some enchanted rods? Yes. Um, I would be lying if I didn't say I was I wasn't interested. Yeah, but Canterex interested in there many different kinds of rods, rods. Shush. Um so he goes over BG to open the gate. Don't blame me for walking through it. At this point he goes over to um a display case, and on the display case you can see there are several arcane runes like carved around the wood and into it that glow with a soft purple light. Um, hmm. He uh, waves his hand over them, 
uh, real in a real quick motion, then takes a key from a necklace around his neck and opens the display case. Um, and inside, you can see there are several rods, like actual spell casting rods that you would see in Eagle House. Um, so you're kind of familiar with them. Huh. Well, these remind me of home. These are usually special order for Inquisition, uh, but I've, I've uh, got the license to sell to other practitioners as long as it's basic magic or uh, augmenting magic. So if you're interested, I have a, something special that I've made up specifically. It's kind of expensive, but it's brand new, and no one, not even in your country, has it yet. All right. Let's see what you got. So, this one, uh, right here, and he picks up a rod, and um, it's got, uh, it's like a, a, a like silver-colored, like steel-colored haft, um, uh, the top of which is capped with um, a, a gemstone that switches colors uh, every now and then. Like, it has that, like... Um, default like color shifting pattern that you'd see on like an itunes like video player thing where it just shifts between all the colors of the rainbow really slowly or on or like my friggin eyeballs uh well no your eyeballs are actually golden now since your since your pact happened your eyeballs uh, or your irises are gold ah um so anyway the that's what the, it kind of looks like uh very hmm. simple simple design um now this one uh, it's a very special, uh, interesting one. Uh, once you attune to it, this has uh, a very strange property where it will lock itself into one of its many modes. I haven't fixed that glitch yet, but uh, it will essentially let you alter your spells a little bit to do other weird things with them. Hmm. Wild magic. Well, that's interesting. No, meta magic. Meta magic. Mm -hmm. A meta magic rod. Mm -hmm. I know what those are. Oh shit. Uh, that's beautiful. I think I. Oh, you might have seen it because I posted it in the fucking uh, XP to level three thing before. Um, but basically, when you attune to it, I roll. Uh, I think it's a D eight or whatever, and then you get one type of meta magic that you can use uh, from the rod. The rod has a certain number of charges to it. That's excellent. Yeah. So it allows anyone who can cast spells and attune to the rod to cast meta magic, not just sorcerers. Alright, what else you got? Well, I've got a few other things here. Let me just open up my Dungeon Master's Guide because I forgot to do that before the game started. Uh, let me fucking... Actually, I think I have a table with a bunch of other shit in here. Hmm. Uh, and then also this one. There we go. Uh, so he has, uh... He has three more rods. Um... One of them, it, two of them look uh, kind of the same. Um, they are very similar, except um, one you can tell is slightly uh, higher, like a higher level of enchantment because it it like pulses softly with uh, purplish light. The other one oh. is, I believe it's like a golden color. Let me see if I can find the actual picture for it. Uh, and post it in chat. There it is. And we'll throw it in somewhere. Uh, I'll just put it in general. Why not? So it's like this. It's got like a, a, a wooden shaft with uh, golden caps in like the shape of crowns. Uh, and then it's adorned with like jewelry and other different material like jade. I thought as you were talking, the guy Rod's Rod's voice was starting to slip into yours. Uh, no it wasn't. 
I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, and then the other one. <laughs> it's really hard to get that out of my fucking head. I'm just saying. What is? <laughs> the Rod's fucking voice. <laughs> I mean, I wonder why. Ooh, is that I a kind freaking of Rod of Sparkly in his voice? It's a Rod of Rulership. Ah. Rod of Rulership. VG, can you give me a solid? Mm -hmm. Say like, say sparkly in his voice, and like the in like the most. <laughs> yes, <Sparkles>. thank you. <laughs> Sweet sauce, Sweet sauce all over my body. <laughs> I am disturbed. And suddenly, I hate the voice. That's uh, that's from a uh, Dane Cook bit. But... Right. Is that a Rod of the Path Keeper? The thing I, was yes. saying was I knew that voice sounded familiar. <laughs> yes, it is. The thing I so was there's... saying was from a Jeff Dunham bit. Uh, no, 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 fucking Dane the, Cook's um, voice. So there, there is a rod of rulership, and there are two rods of the Pack Keeper. One more enchanted than the other. Oh, one of them's a plus two. <laughs> mm -hmm. and the other, oh god. Now, two of them are rare. Ooh. So these cost a lot of money. So I really hope you can afford them if you're trying to buy them, because they are thousands well, of gold, and I don't know if you have that. I don't have thousands. Well, you know so... they're here. Um, these, I usually only make special order. Uh, these ones have actually already been taken by a couple of people. Um, uh, already. These are, uh, the customer's order, so you can't take these specific ones if you want them. Uh, but I can remake them if you'd like, of course. Well, if I ever come across, uh, a small fortune, I'll come to you first. Of course. Of course, you know, it's always fun to window shop, even if you don't have the money to buy it. <clears throat> says, damn, <coughs> he's come across a small fortune multiple times. Shush. You, I mean, you're no talking to shush, but you're right. No one needs to know where the money went. No Up one your needs ass to know. Where uh, it always goes. Listen, I literally put all of mine into a bow that I'm not even, I don't even know if I'll be using next level. Like, <laughs> My characters have been consistently the most poor in the group. I only have thirty you keep gold. Dying. <laughs> We're getting arrested. I mean, Jesus Christ! God, not again. Uh. <laughs> Speaking of, I wonder how Rod's doing up in fucking magic jail. Not magic jail, magic magic boot camp. Well, that's something to find out another day. I thought it was just more like you know, like Camp Laszlo. But Matt, Can't blast. <laughs> you wish. I've been imagining King Brock this entire time. I know Hunter thinks it's probably like Auschwitz or something. <laughs> He's way too uh, it's more like this. No, it's more Frost like is out. obviously Laszlo. Alright. Hmm. Well, if you're interested in any of this special selection, you can order something custom. And I can have it ready for you in a week, or you can just take something off the shelf. Excluding these, of course. I will... come back when I have a substantial amount of money, and we'll talk. <laughs> it sounds good and to that, me. Remember, remember the staff of Bouncing Blasts? No. Oh, oh god, you, no. Yes. No stuff. Oh god. god. Well, I let's to not. Hunter. That's the answer. Vichy, have I already told you about that? About that no, stuff? No, no, this no, but doesn't let's... need to be said. This doesn't let's need not. to be said. <laughs> let's not for now. I'll, t I'll, I'll tell you later. Alright, so uh, you leave uh, Raj's shop. Um, uh, uh, he takes the uh, the Rubal game from you, unless you're going to buy it. But Other than that. Uh, uh, nah. Nah. Alrighty. Should get me one. Why didn't anyone think of getting me a rod? Come you decided on. not to go to Rod's Rod. <laughs> Unless you want to still go, there's still plenty of time. Nah, I'm... <laughs> I'll go back to the tag back to the end and it's like, yo. How many times are you gonna force me to do the voice this session? 
How many times can we force you to do the voice? Uh, f until the end Five. of the day, and then I'm going to force you onto a ship and send you to Gorgon House. <laughs> um... I wonder uh, if Grisha would just go where seeing everyone everyone's going. Grisha. Literally only two people. Um, uh, you know that uh, Orion went to the the alchemist to deal with the mushrooms. I also told you to go sell your shit to the alchemist. Well, yeah, you that's also that. true. Either that or uh, get it made into something. I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna go to the alchemist shop. Why not? Okay. I'm gonna practice with my uh, bow scope. Uh, do I know somewhere that would have like a target that I could just use for target practice? Mm -hmm. Groff, please. Nice. You know about Groff because of your time in the Ranger Corps. Groff is a a pretty famous individual from back in the day, but he's semi-retired now. Got it. Semi. Yeah. And then just for a refresher, this is the guy with the uh, the bright orange hair, button chops, mohawk, the whole thing, and then the mechanical arm. I imagine it's the kind of thing where it's you, you ne it's never really just uh, yeah, you never really retire. No, you retire. I mean, you can retire. He doesn't, he doesn't do Ranger Core things. He just kind of like hangs out with Ranger Core people. I say semi retired because no, no, I mean, like, he's he's no, running a business. He's just not a, in the Ranger Core anymore because of his arm. That ain't what I meant. It's kind of like the it's whole not thing. Not like a game. No, it was like once you're well, like once you're in the military, you're kind of always a soldier. That that stuff doesn't leave you. Yeah, I mean they they are the military, but they are they're mostly been used for caravan guards over the past centuries. Like there's not there hasn't been a war until now, <laughs> so. These guys, they're used to, like, chasing off giant swamp animals and protecting caravans along the road. That's pretty much what their job was for the last <coughs> 300 years. Oh, fair. That and dealing with thieves when they happen. Well, I'll spend my time over there uh, practicing with my scope. Having a good, cool. having a good talk. Sure. Um, the Groff, again, brings up the, uh, the matter of training, if you're interested. Uh, I'll keep in contact about that, but I don't think so. I think I'm just gonna stick to uh, pulls back and bow string and thuds into the target. Well, it's up to you. <coughs> if you ever want to learn how to fight with something other than the bow, you come to me. If I ever need to stab someone, I'll give you a holler. Alright then. Um. <sighs> Fucking Grisha, you're going to the alchemist. So, are you going to sell your shrooms or get something made out of them? Uh, bit of calling me, bit of call me. Uh, anything when they go in there? Anything seem any like anything I would know of? Uh, what do you mean? Like plant wise? Because you live in a fucking yeah. tundra, so no. No, like, there's gotta be like some fucking herbs that grow in caves. Uh, not that you know of. Not that you, you know live of. Not that are any of them rock. down here. Definitely, like, definitely nothing you're that you're across used to. The fucking continent from where you. You're across the are. continent. That's you awesome. live in the mountains, and you're, uh, the most plants you'll probably see is like lichen Moss. that doesn't do anything. Moss and fungi. Like, maybe a bit of mold that grows on your more disgusting tribe mates. That's probably about it. Um, everything oh, else is basically animal-based. So you're... You uh, you have the option of selling, selling the mushroom for 100 gold or getting a potion made out of it. One of those two. I'll sell for 100 gold and. Uh, uh, and uh, I'll also take a look at what he has on offer. <clears throat> okay. So he has uh, the basic healing potions. He also has a few, um, like, higher level, higher cost potions. 
depends on what you're interested in, but um, the, let me see. I have a list of potions that he has, actually. And the I think they're technically magic items, so on the magic item table. Where are they? There you go. Actually, that was one. There is a bottle of perfume. <laughs> uh, that's a kind of interesting for a potion shop. Let me see if I can't find anything else. Uh, yeah. Okay, so. Uh, basically, all of the potions that he has are uncommon, quote-unquote. Um, so I think uncommon is from... 500 plus, if I'm not mistaken. So I literally, I literally can afford nothing on an offer this entire shop. I could be wrong <laughs> about that, but um, I'm pretty sure it's like 500 plus. Um, which, You're well, correct. if it's, and because it's a potion, it's technically, because it's a consumable, it's half that cost. So it's like 250 and up. No, 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 no. Issues of the 500 is like the after half. Oh, is it? No, okay. Well, then never the mind. Half potion is 50. It's supposed to be 100, but it's half because it's consumable. There you go. Alright, then never mind. Um, yeah, it's about, about 500 bucks. I can afford literally nothing. There you go. That's just the so, stuff. So the other than that, I have no idea what it is. I'm gonna ask what the fuck this perfume thing is. Uh, that, I think, is a Xanathar thing. So let me get my book out real quick. It is. I just forget what it's called. It's perfume of Bewitching. But, yeah, let's see Charm, folks. It has a particularly fun charm effect to it. Oh dear me, would you fucking I think it's, need I think it's like the, an I think perfume. it's like an aeros I think it's like an aerosol love potion kind of sorta. Of. Well, it's like it's got the nozzle with the little the squeaky ball on the end of it that blows it in your face. What the fuck are the magic items on this thing? Huh. Never you know anything this up like this up north. Definitely not. Yeah, it did, it does it smells really, shit. really good. Um it's a very pleasing scent to anybody who smells it. As it should be. I mean there's a fucking few. I don't know any perfumes that smell like dink kush, unfortunately. <laughs> That's because Matt. uh dink kush does not smell good. That's the point. Uh, perfume of Bewitching, there you go. Uh, it has enough for one use, basically. You can apply the perfume to yourself. It lasts for an hour, and for the duration, you have advantage on all charisma checks directed at humanoids with a challenge rating one or lower. Um, the other thing is also that they do not know that they've been charmed by the perfume, if they are charmed by the perfume. So. Well, like I said earlier, I, I have 149. I can afford literally nothing this entire damn job. You can afford uh, two healing potions or one healing potion and the perfume. So, if you want, that's what you can afford from his shop. Hmm. Or, Apologies, I don't can... think of anything he has. Uh, well, is that is that 140 whatever, including the hundred you got from selling it to him? Yes. Okay. As well, if you change your mind, I could always take that hundred gold back for you, uh, from you, make you something using your uh, special ingredients, as it were. Yes, but I don't know exactly know how long I'm going to be in town for. Oh, it's fine. The experimental process is over. It'll only take about an hour to distill. Uh, why not? I uh, give him the I give him the hundred roll back. Excellent. If you wait around the shop for an hour, um, then roll a d7. Nine. 
Uh, I love it when they roll a nine on a D seven. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad I just had myself muted because my cat started licking the palm of my hand, and that would have been uncomfortable. I can for hear everybody. him purring through your microphone. Hmm. You want to try that again, Hunter? Hunter. What? D seven, bro. <laughs> oh, I heard D. I heard D twelve. It was D twelve earlier, but I mistake it from a different thing, so it's a D seven. There you go, four. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Cool. It is a potion of water breathing. You can breathe underwater for an hour. Stop biting my thumb. Stop it. Without any issue. Yeah. Fine, sure. <clears throat> <coughs> I uh, thank the man, take the potion, and I leave. And this one, by the way, looks a little bit different than the black sludge that Orion had. It's um, instead of being a purple color, it's it's like a a deep bluish green color with like little flecks of gold in it. Uh, okay, cool. Anyone else have anything they want to do before I kick off the uh, the next leg of your redemption arc, <laughs> as it were? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, redemption arc. I'm just gonna go back into hey, the, hey, uh, the hey. inner. Is this just... is there a redemption arc because <laughs> like, like technically can be considered serial killers? Well, I mean, you're uh, you're redeeming yourself in the eyes of the person who paid fifteen hundred gold to have you not go to jail. Yeah. No, 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 Ducky, don't worry. This isn't our redemption arc. This is their redemption arc. We're just along for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> this is everybody else's problem. We don't Pretty much. That. Buddy, I need to get up. It's, it's time to go get food. All right, cool. So um, the the day gradually uh, begins to come to an end. Um, at around uh, a little after sundown, um, uh, Carver returns to the uh, the tavern and beckons you all into the back room. All right. I go right to the back room and I already know where to go. Well, I follow. It's just like the kitchen of the of the tavern. Yeah. Um, all right. So he brings you up and he says, uh, All right, well, I've managed to negotiate a position aboard a ship for you to pay off a good chunk of the rest of your debt to me. I give you two thumbs up. <laughs> my, uh, my colleague in the seven. I honestly forgot we were in debt. My colleague in the seven, Captain uh, Admiral, rather Admiral Robin Thrace, she runs uh, most of the ships you find coming in and out of the harbor. Although unfortunately, a couple of those have gone missing on their way to or from Gorgon House, from a place called mm. uh, Bartago. Bartago? Bar Bar yeah, Bar Bartago. I have to say it with a Scottish accent, but it's Bartago. Ber B, B A R T. AGL. Have I heard of this place before, or no? Probably not. Uh, yeah, probably. Okay. Just from I'm assuming being I've heard a, no trade stories port. related to that place at all. No, you would not. Basically, it's uh, trade with Gorgon House is almost exclusive to Serpent House because the other two nations don't like them. Uh, so what I'm hearing is we get. To Fight somebody, most likely. So if you're if you spent any reasonable amount of time in Serpent House, you may have heard of some of the places in Gorgon House through hearsay. Um, but every, everywhere else, if you're from anywhere else, I honestly forgot sense. what house I was from. I you're from Dragon House. Your Harper's Rest is a Dragon. There's House. There's a place called Dragon House. Dragon House is the Northern Kingdom. You've been there like so many times. Have we have we gone fucking three months and thirteen episodes with you not knowing Guys, what the kingdoms I have are called? Seven campaigns of fucking week. <laughs> Ducky. All right. <laughs> the, it sounds like a you problem. So, quick refresher: <laughs> each kingdom is called it has has a specific house. It is a house. House and kingdom are interchangeable. The serpent house okay. is the serpent kingdom. It's the eastern king or western kingdom. About what the fucking kingdoms are called. Yeah. Dragon House is the Northern Kingdom. It is where you started out your your adventure. It is where you've been for the past like three months before you headed to Serpent House, which is where you are now. Wonderful, thank you. That's like the one I didn't have. Yeah. 
The other ones are Eagle House and Gorgon House, which used to be Lion House. Um, anyway, so... This cat tries to stick his face in my fucking tuna casserole, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> Alright, so he says, hey, we're, you, you fucking, you can guys can go to Bartego and, and deal with this shit, and, uh, she'll pay you for being security, basically, aboard. Uh, aboard a ship called the Ruby Star, I believe. Ruby Star? Yeah, it's one of her best ships. Fast, large cargo hold, all that fun stuff. Captained Ooh. by a very interesting man and his brother. Well, do you know the names of them? I believe his name was Madrigal, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Really? Captain Madrigal. Uh, his last name. Can't remember his first name. Hmm. Okay, Captain Mongolian. <laughs> well, where do we need to go? I'm guessing the port here? Oh, fuck off. Well, they they finished making preparations to head out yesterday, so they'll be headed out uh, tomorrow morning, starting at dawn. So I get your asses up early, get to the docks, search for a ship with red sails, and uh, tell them Carver sent you. So the mate. Uh, is there any trouble expected, or is this just a normal run of the mill? Well, honestly, considering that ships have gone missing in the past few months, I'd expect some trouble on the way there, yeah. So we get to fight people, hell yeah. Possibly. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but it's up to you to figure out what's going on and stop it, or just work security, either one. Really, she's only hiring you for the security part. If you want to find out what's going on and give me the information, I'll maybe add a bonus to your, uh, to your pay. Alright, tell you. forward to it. Well, at least I can get some reading done. I should probably grab some books for the trip. I do that now, then. You've got uh, until a, the early wee hours of the morning to figure out what you're going to do, because they're shoving off at first light. Hey, uh, Orion, do you mind if I join you on, on getting those books? I would like to... Yeah, I'm gonna go with you as well. I kinda want some stuff. I look at... First, I look at Gersha. You, of all people, want books. And then I look at you, and then I go, Why have you been following me around? I get bored really easily, and a horse doesn't like it when I mess stuff up, so... Okay. Well, I'm gonna go get some books, and then I guess I'll, uh... We'll find something for you. I have a whole lot of energy. I need to, I need to expel it somehow, so... Maybe we can find you a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> <laughs> the physical reaction I had, I, I have a top with the Rubik's Cube. I would give you psychic damage for that, except that I also have Ben and Jerry's and fucking Subway in my game, so... <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I was about to say, if, you, if I take psychic damage for Rubik's Cube, the DM's dead. Uh, <laughs> I'd be such an asshole if I did that. This is like Dungeons and Daddies, where they give their players psychic damage for telling dad jokes. Yeah, if only. If it gets really the, bad, uh, I might start doing that, but it hasn't been, so. Hmm. I'm not more of like the uh, puzzle type mate, more of uh, like the cause ruckus. We'll get you a drum set, then how about that? <laughs> Yo, I think you'll fit in quite well with this group. Uh... <laughs> Says you, I'm buying fucking books, because they're gonna have peace and quiet on a nice long boat what? trip, I hope. Paola will climb up. Alright, and... let's be honest with ourselves, without, without luck, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, don't remind me. I couldn't use some more. I just love how I just love how there's just, you just immediately agree, didn't even try and deny it. <laughs> well, I can't do one a specific book if they have it. So let's go ahead and go. Uh off we go and Paola will like pass. Cool. I'm gonna look for a book on you know. Uh actually um Hmm. 
I'm gonna try to look for a book on the wildlife in Gorgon House if there, if one exists. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check. I'm going to look for body books. <laughs> for, you mean like medical yes. books? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, I'm allowed to get books about rocks. Yes. Um. So, uh, go ahead and if you guys are looking for specific stuff, then make me investigation checks. In the meantime, uh, Orion, I'm you so, find I can't get my laptop out right now. I'm trying to fend off my cats. From you my find puppy. um a yeah. set of uh you find like four four volumes of books that are kind of like in a box set. And what are those books? Uh, each of the, each of them is like a, a a bestiary for the different biomes of this region. One of them, of course, covers the Southern Badlands, which has a lot of very scary, very, uh, <laughs> very tough to fight shit in it. Um, and like creatures range from giant scorpions to giant purple worms uh, to uh, yeah, it's very, very dangerous place to go. Um, basically, humanoids are prey unless you're an orc. And know how to fight them. And not a lot of people are willing to make the trek there without serious armed guard. I got a You fuck off! This is not. How much for this one and the entire set in general? Uh, let's fucking find out. I forget how much books cost. I think they were like 50 gold a piece, right? Oh god, that's right. Books are fucking hella expensive. For yeah, especially. Imagine paying three hundred fucking dollars for a goddamn book. Um, so, yeah, fifty gold a piece would put it at two hundred gold for the box set. There's no discount for a box set. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Costs a lot of money to print a book. He needs to make his payment back. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna Grid... double check how far into the book on Archery I am. I got that back at Fort Bato, so I'm probably fucking. Ah, uh, you're probably done with it, it. Now. It's been almost two months since you've. Yeah, but I'm not reading, reading it like in between every long rest, so like I'm only reading it like every once in a while. I mean, you but could yeah, probably, probably breeze through it pretty it. easily because it's nothing you haven't seen before. It's, it's basically a training <laughs> manual on how to be an archer, <laughs> which you already know how to do. <laughs> Uh, fine. I'll buy the fucking Badlands. Do you need Do you need any any help with that, money wise? No, I'm fine. I'll buy this one. And I'll take the Badlands. Warlock, you don't back the fuck up. You're gonna get smacked the fuck up. Okay, cool. So there's a there's a, sh a shit ton of information on Gorgon House's various uh various monsters that dwell there and live there. I got an eleven. Should I just put Gorgon House Bestiary? Yeah, Not put a Gorgon House Bestiary, cool. and then, um, yeah, it has a bunch of information on beasts and other Ooh, monstrosities. Oh, goddamn to the casserole and pee! I'm looking for like specific anatomy books. On oh this. yeah, that's right. I have flame cloak. That's right. I fucking spend a shit ton of money buying ingredients. <laughs> I'm looking for a specific anatomy book on like the like air like what's in Gorgon House like the things there. Anatomy of Gorgon House? <laughs> what are you talking about? No, 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 no. Like uh, like orcs, tieflings, and like the monsters there. Like you know, oh, like uh, specific monster or humanoid anatomy from that. Um, sure. If you want to find, I'll, I'll give you one of those two. So you can either have orc anatomy or you can have tiefling anatomy. One of the two. What's more. They are tiefling or orc. Orcus. The predominant orc. race of Gorgon House. I'll take the orc. Tis the orcish kingdom. Jesus Christ. I have four books in my inventory. I just want to throw that up there. Alright. If only you were a wizard. <laughs> How much is this book? 50 gold. Mine is Caleb. Um. Normie Caleb. Fuck, I only have 40. Uh, Payula, go ahead and make me a investigation check to see if you can find some. I did, help. I got an 11. Oh, well. How heavy is a fucking. Uh. Oh, yeah, I, I have that. I forgot about that. I would uh, give my last one. How, how heavy is the Yeti really Club? I'm trying to eat and I have to fend myself 
let's fend the cats off. Um, uh, you, you find, um, there's, uh, uh, you find, like, basically an article, basically more of it, like, an advertisement in, like, an archived pamphlet, um, for, um, a type of sling ammunition called star stones. Um, the, it's like a small reddish rock that when it comes into contact with um, uh, something with a, a high enough impact velocity, uh, it lights on fire. It lights the target on fire. When so basically, it's, it's slinger ammo that does an extra d4 of, of fire damage. Uh, did you just call that star stones? Star stones, yes. Making a you have reasons to use a sling? Disgusting. I mean, Kendrick does. <laughs> Hail is interesting. That's what you get with an 11. If you get any, if you get like a really high roll, I'll give you the last material that I've come up with homebrew wise. <laughs> but you don't really have time today to do it. You have to find another time. Uh, really quickly though, the Yeti cloak. How much does that weigh? The Yeti cloak. I never, like, I never three, put a weight to it. Like, it's, it's pretty heavy. It's like five pounds of material God, just heavy leather and I, fur cloak i forgot <laughs> to like put weight on the books and then i put weight on all the things in my inventory i'm like oh shit that like doubled my weight you can just drag Sorry. and drop it from the compendium you know that right and it comes with i'll weight. just look at the books that orion bought i'm gonna put my book back sadly and go back over to orion <laughs> i don't have enough money <laughs> well, that's too fucking bad <laughs> i know uh, Paola's gonna hand him 50 gold Listen, I've already read through uh, this one. You can look through it if you want. I'm gonna hand him the book on our tree. I do want that one back though. There was actually something I actually kind of was interested in. Okay. You know, so apparently... I get a book and another 50 cold? Yes. Okay, I guess I'll go ahead and buy that orc anatomy book. Thank you, Paiola. Alright, cool. So I have an oh, archery yeah, book. Not my book nice. No, no, no. I said I, to, I have a book. I have two books now. I have an archery book. How much does that weigh? Uh, well, if you go to, All if you have your pounds. character sheet up, Everybody go to pounds. the compendium tab, which is the eye in a circle on the right-hand side of the screen on roll 20. Uh -huh. And then search up book, and then drag and drop the item for book into your inventory. It should come with the weight already in there. The issue is I name all my books in, like, my inventory. I don't name them outside of my inventory, so I just... Yeah. Well, okay. if, if you want to, you can just keep them as book and then change the quantity. Well, I already have a book in my inventory, so I'm just changing them. Yeah. Uh, but really quickly, uh, Orion's gonna, I want it back though, because the pan there was something really interesting actually. Okay. I think there was some elvish archers uh, at some point that used magic as along with archery. It's really weird. I wanted to actually look more into that. Some point. I'll read through it, and if I find it, I'll give it to you and show you. No, I've already, I already saw it, and I already read through it, but I actually uh, just wanted okay. to look at it at some point. Maybe uh, okay. Maybe about it. I don't know if Archie's going to help me out much, mate, but okay. Thank you. I uh, put the books in my bag. Alright. Alright, so with knowledge gained and things prepared, y'all, uh, I'm, I'm assuming bed down for the night, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, um, then uh, at about, I'd say probably th four in the morning. Oh, wait, you didn't let me buy any books. You didn't tell me you wanted to buy any books. Why does I, everyone it, want to buy fucking books? I don't know. I even said, implied I was. I was going with fucking Orion. I didn't hear that at all. I heard only three people were interested in doing it, so I just. Her three. Go away. Do you want anything specific, or are you just browsing? Uh, legends, myths, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, for sure. Well, there is um, just uh. Right off the bat, I don't even you don't even need to roll for it because it's the most famous legend in all of Serpent House. There's the legend of Leva's okay. tomb. Okay, things I haven't heard. Try look. I'm looking specifically for things like I haven't heard. Before. Grisha specifically has not heard. <coughs> this one specifically has to do with attempts to reach the island and what people found there. So it's more specific than just oh, there's some kind of weapon somewhere. It's like, hey, here's documented attempts of going there and what happened. 
So if you want to know mean, about if that, you, you want can... a book about a legend. You should just, you should just start on my biography. <laughs> wow. I hate you. Ego <sighs> for days. Take one d four brain damage as your head grows two sizes. <laughs> Oh no, Dumbledore got outside. Um, in terms of other, in terms of other legends, there are um, there are like like entertainment books, like fiction books. Um, let's see. There was. Come Come let's see. I'm trying to think back through all the fucking lore that I've written to see if there's anything I can tell you or not. Yeah, this is a bit my bad. I mean, you could get like you could get like stories um, that may or may not be true. Oh, if that's what you're interested in. No, it's in terms of things that are actual legends, it's usually mostly like hearsay. Um, oh, you know what? I can give you one. Um, if you roll, if you roll a high enough investigation check, so roll an investigation check. I'll see how high you get, and then. We'll see where it goes. Okay. If only I could use my own part of inspirations on my own roll. I know, right? Stupid buff classes. Right? It's not. I doubt that was it. It's not too hard. Um. So. Uh, normally. Um, what, what what you what you glean from this book is that there are uh, uh, like it's like a collection of children's fables. Um, most of them are kind of relatively harmless variations on stuff you've heard before, but one of them specifically uh, catches your eye because it's not something that you were ever told um, that has something to do specifically with uh, being a sailor. Uh, that's to not go past Leva's Isle because out there is like uh, the edge of the world that's guarded by a horrible monster that will sink your ship and kill everyone on board if you go that far out into the ocean. Guarded by what? It's a, a horrible monster and then like it just drops off the face of the planet. Like that's it's basically people think it's like flat earth theory like there's nothing out there. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But again, it's just a legend. It's a more of a cautionary tale of being like, hey, we don't know what's out in the middle of the ocean, and none of our ships can really handle ocean travel um, like out in the middle of the sea for however long. We don't know how long it will be until we right, find boys, anything All right, boys, time to invent airships and discover the Americas. That's all I'm hearing. <laughs> Since this was supposed to be happening all at the same time, but because I VG apparently didn't hear me, <laughs> you could spot me a gold because I'm one short. One short of 50 for a children's book? Well, you said it was 50 gold a book per book. So. Yeah. I was just asking you were one short of 50. Yeah, I'm one. Yeah, I'm one short. Okay. I mean, there's four of you there. I toss him a gold piece. There you go. There you go, mate. I'm cool. trying so to add a, be more stingy with my cash. Add a, a book okay. of children's fables to your inventory. I don't remember how much weight. How much weight does a book have? One. Five. Five. It's a five-pound book of fables. Yeah, they're, they're Jesus. fucking textbooks. <laughs> Shit. Dude. Never That's mind. Fair. That must be a lot of fucking fables. Uh, never mind. That. It's fucking. It's weights one because it's because it's children's fables. It's Aesop's Can fables. It so yes, it is. Yeah. No, it's Aesop's fables. It's so not it's a fucking pounds. wordy dissertation on the the plague of Mother Goose and her family on the world, but. Hey. Okay. Like, if I ever run to a, a boy again, I can read this to him. Uh, yeah, that's true. He could translate. Actually, he could read it himself, actually. <laughs> Think about it. He could read it. He just, uh, he can't speak it. That's the difference. Uh, 
All right, cool. So you guys have all gotten your books. Kenrick's not going to surprise me with a book reading, right? No, Kenrick went back to sleep when the group went to go buy books. Okay. Like, they gotta get up, like, 4.30 in the morning. No, uh, by the way, you guys, like, enter this bookshop, and when you did, the owner was, like, gave out this sigh of just sadness, because you guys are basically the people who enter the store 10 minutes before closing. So, <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, you spend about an hour searching through books, and then he's like, oh, my God, I just want to go home. We're like a mom named Karen that just walked into a grocery I, store. I, 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 I feel bad. I'm going to give him a couple silver. As like <laughs> just a tip, like a just tip. To, I will slap yeah. three gold on the table for him. I'm going to oh walk God. out of the store. He's like, well, I guess it was worth you know, it. You'll actually make that four gold. <laughs> I, I want it. Yeah, four gold, two silver. That's probably more than that guy gets paid in a month. You say that, but we just bought four items for 50 bucks. Uh huh. I'll, I'll toss. And are you telling like... me that gold is dollars in this world? No, no, no they're more like ten dollars. That's the issue. You, the thing is, though, you act like you act like uh, you act like he gets paid that much. You get, yeah, he gets paid I mean, he at least gets fucking five gold profit off of each book. He also I mean, might, this man's uh, a he's also, man. He doesn't. He isn't a fucking peasant slaving away in the mines. He's just a distributor too. Like he's not the printer, either. Like he just sells the stuff that comes off the shelf. But he he makes profit off sell. Yeah. And it's probably decent profit too, since I can't imagine too many people want books. No, I mean fifty so gold will, will secure a, a decent living for a pretty long time. Uh, anyway, so um, so yeah, you guys uh, go six, six silver give the, give the guy a shit ton of money, uh, go back to the inn, I'm assuming, and take your rest for the night. Uh, now, at about four in the morning, um, each of you is awoken by a, uh, a knock at your door, um, to which you open it to, to find Horace, saying, hey, you should probably get going. Um, can't they at least wait till fucking sunrise? They are leaving at sunrise. Takes a I'm while gonna to get the dogs from here. Let's I'm go! Gonna... It would behoove you not to be late. Yeah. Not want to be late again? Because I'm still looking at Clyde today. Probably gonna be Grisha again because Grisha's the best. Fuck, I should buy a change of clothes. I, fucking... ah. I get my bag and I leave. <laughs> Mm. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna head out. Uh, time to show off, eh? Right? I'm gonna grab all my equipment and leave. Thanks for dealing with me again, Horace. And he waves and leaves. It is my job. Oh! I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna fucking chuck a gold piece at him. Take care of the cart for us, make sure no one steals anything from it. Uh. Okay. That's the gold piece for doing it. If I got the hit, I understand. Listen, it's fucking way too early. Anyway, I'll see you in a <coughs> month, probably. Let's start walking out the door. Cool. Alright, uh, Kenrick summons Goldbrand and Longbow for him before he leaves, so no one else can see it. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, wait, no, I, uh, I don't know why I have a little alarm set for 4.15, but I have an alarm set for 4.15. I was saying what in Solus's comment. What the fuck are you talking about? You summon the bow, this giant obvious golden bow, so that in no one can room. see it. In his room. In his room. You mean just like away from everyone else? Yeah. He basically it's... summons it out of sight, but it's still a golden bow. Okay. Yeah, so he's, everyone sees he has a golden bow, they just don't see him summon it out of nowhere. I mean, I mean, your party's you seen you do that before, but right? <laughs> <Except for laughs> know what your weapon player. looks like. Alright, well. You guys got your stuff. And you head down to the docks. Uh, the docks are, um... Uh, like, shrouded in fog this early in the morning. And the only way you can 
tell not to fall into the water are uh, wooden uh, lamp posts that are, are lit um, along the the edge of the dock, uh, going down like uh, almost a mile long. This thing. These. Um. Uh, you you were given directions on where to go, and it doesn't take you very long to find um, the ruby star. Uh, seeing as you were told to look for a ship with red sails, and it is the only one with red sails for a very long uh, while. Um, so as you get there, you see that there are crew uh, hustling and moving crates from the dock onto the ship and down into the cargo hold. Um, and there is a, a, a pair of men standing uh, at toward the the back of the ship kind of giving orders and, and uh, giving directions. One of them is um, they both are uh, like medium height humans. Um, one of them wearing the tri-corner captain's hat um, and carrying a, a scimitar on his hip. The other one um, smoking a pipe um, with a, like a long leather trench coat on um, and very nice clothing, both of them. Big uh, iron on his hip. I'm gonna go ahead and walk up to him and go, G'day. Carver sends us. Well, hello there. Um, my name is Captain Henry Magical. I'm assuming you are Grid. Yes, sir. Excellent. And these are your companions, I'm assuming, as well. Yep. Taylor's gonna wave down at him. Well, you are very kind. Hello. Up. All right. My name is Captain Henry Magical. This is my brother, James. He is my first mate. You will answer to both me and him while you are aboard this ship. No questions, unless you want to be thrown overboard. Aye. I run a tight ship. I keep this place uh, clean. I keep it precise. And I keep it effective at doing its job, which is getting things to and from places very quickly. So. Aye. And we're here to make sure that doesn't get screwed up in any way by any outside forces, right? Of course. Yep. You're... Your uh, stay is guaranteed. You will eat mess with the crew when it is ready and prepared by our cook. Uh, and each day, uh, at least two of you will be patrolling the ship, taking shifts. Lovely. Oh, I get to climb the mess. Yes. Can you even climb? I don't oh. know. You're, you're rather large, and I I feel like how all much that, different I, can I it be like than I'm climbing a tree? tree? Yeah. Anyone can climb a tree, right? I can climb a tree, yeah. He was just gonna, like, squint at them. The, uh, the captain raises an eyebrow at you, like, what the fuck are these guys doing? No, I don't. <laughs> no idea. Anyway, not <laughs> fucking <laughs> landies. Bite me. I don't know <laughs> if you knew this, Barlow, but I, I don't know if you know this, Barlow, but I spent about half my childhood sleeping in trees. Right. I didn't ask for your backstory. Also, uh, do not be alarmed. My brother here is uh, inclined in the arcane, shall we say, uh, and does have his license, so do not right. mind him. He is here for uh, our protection as well, but against other sorts of things. Halo's gonna lean into Grisha's Listen, view. Captain, I, I hang around with these nothing. fuckers and I point to everyone in the party except Poela, <laughs> and I go, trust me, I understand magical arts, whatever you call it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Pretty much half of us can cast magic. Okay, and do you have your Over paperwork that allows you to- Over half of us, me and Orion are the only ones who really can. I'm just gonna go walk but around. Do, do you each have your licenses to cast? <clears throat> oh wait, that's right, didn't you say your license is fucking expired? Oh right, we- Well, we have been kind of- Why are you still sick, you dumbass? Couldn't we have found a way to, like, renew their licenses? Maybe. Uh, Holy shit! You're sick! Stop fucking trying to cast things! <clears throat> um... The spell play cleared up already. I'm full. Yeah. Well, I feel ten times better. In any case, at least don't do it in the harbor. Obviously, well, there's then... no one to watch us on the ocean. Ah. Please do not burn Aye. my ship down. I We're go not to going to something burn and then down. Orion realizes something and then stops immediately. I'm only a pyromaniac on the weekend. Personally, I don't care if it's in defense of the ship, but in other times, please keep it to yourself. One errant spark, and the whole thing could go up in flames. So, 
be very, very careful and very decisive when you use it, if you use it at all. Which I really hope we don't have to. Amen. All right. Hey, hand. Right. Um, James, show them to their quarters. I will shove off in uh, a few minutes as soon as the cargo is loaded. Fully, we can get on our way. Oh yeah, my only uh, third level spell I have right now is uh, Dispel Magic. I guess it is. Hi. Okay. Um, so you are shown to your quarters by uh, James Madrigal, um, who uh, he opens a door and it's basically it's a room with six bunk beds in it. Um, so you, uh, the entirety of your party takes up three, and then there are three other crew in that room with you. Oh. It's, uh, sorry, it's a bit cramped for space. Um, unfortunately. The ship was designed for speedy travel, not comfort, so... Yeah, fair enough. How big is That's the room? Fair. It's big enough to fit six bunk beds, so... Pretty big. That's... that's not... Six bunk beds isn't much in the high seas. It's a lot on the high seas, actually. Six beds with enough room there, for people to move dude, this around. This is a yes. hallway. This is a glorified hallway. Yeah, it's a pretty big fucking space. Um, and, uh, other cruise quarters are, are, are other places on the ship, obviously. And then the uh, the galley is below you on the th- uh, the third deck, as well as the cargo hold, if you're interested. Um, in Wonderful. terms of uh, shifts, you decide amongst yourselves, but we really only need two of you patrolling the deck at any one given time. The rest of you can do as you wish. Uh, you will not be expected to work on this voyage, so honestly, we wouldn't mind the help, if you're willing. I don't want helping. I mean, I can do what I can. I can't do much. I mean, it, I it depends the on what... Uh, Again, you're not what, expected to. Sure. You've, you're here on, merely for security reasons. Uh, we'll oh great, we can do that. We can get some fun. extra recompense for assisting more. Well, you, I don't know. You'll probably get a tan from being on the deck all the time. Looks at gray skin Goliath. <laughs> I don't know. You can get darker gray. Get, can Goliath get a tan? Oh yeah, I go from being. Just, Stone gray to coal black. I mean, I'm Thanks. assuming they could. I'm gonna go look out at the ocean. There's six of us. If two of us need to be tro- patrolling, then we could break it down to eight hour shifts. And that gives us some free time to help out if we want to do whatever. I'll probably be catching up on my reading. Yes, of course. I'm gonna be looking at my book, too. So if you, if any of you are uh, magically inclined, I wouldn't mind uh, discussing things with you. I'm always interested to hear about uh, new methods of casting. It's been quite a while since I was able to get my hands on anything worthwhile. Um, Inquisition regulations being what they are. Talk to the elf. (laughs) I can show you some stuff. I kind of like wave at him. I, I love how you just say just the elf, but like there's two other spellcasters in the party. There's only one nice elf. Shade. Ah, yes, the bard, who I guess is an arcane caster, but one I don't know that. Two, you also aren't magically inclined race from the country that has magic on lockdown and has de- dealt with the Inquisition. Yes. So yes, talk Shut to up, the being fucking right. elf. Shut up, Mac. We're being right. I'll be left <laughs> all I want. Um, alrighty then. So, uh, you guys are in your quarters. You basically unpack all your shit. Um, each, uh... I have nothing to unpack. Each bunk has a, a foot locker attached to it that you can store things in, should you wish to. Um, so you don't have to lug around all your equipment all the time. I'm gonna put my, uh, my special book in there. Yeah. And, James, backpack, and then I'm going to keep my two books out. James uh, shakes each of your hands and says, Well, welcome to the Ruby Star. We're going to be seeing a lot of each other over the coming month, so uh, 
Oh. Good luck. I should be an interesting experience, to say the least. This is going to oh, be yes. fun. Um, he is. Uh, he puts his uh, pipe. He, he basically takes a pipe out of his pocket, strokes it up, starts smoking it, um, and heads out, out of the room and up onto the deck. I'm gonna practice. I'm gonna practice my violin. Okay, make a performance check. Oh. <laughs> We haven't been doing a lot of rolling this session, so why is the as well? You know, we if I like highballed it, like, really highballed it, you know, like, this is only gonna pay off, like, a fifth of our debt, right? How much How much debt do we have now? 1,500. You started with 1,500. He never gave yeah, you an amount yeah. that was paid off, though. Uh, uh dirty 20. Fucking student dirty 20. Loves, dear God. You do a, a pretty passable job. Um, uh, the sailors are used to hearing sea shanties for the most part, so they're kind of interested in this elven form of music that you're playing. Okay. Oh, you don't need sea shanties, mate. Kendrick? I don't know how to play any sea shanties. Kendrick, no. Probably not. <laughs> I think I'll give it a try. <laughs> Um, if you if you want, just careful not to break it. All right. Do I have to roll a performance check too? For what? I'm trying to try to play a sea shanty with, on this thing that he handed me. On a viola. <laughs> yeah. Do you have proficiency in viola? No, I know. It sounds awful. It's the worst thing you've oh, ever wait, heard. Oh, wait, jeez. I, I would, you know, I was never actually adding my proficiency bonus, so it should have been a 20. Can Pangula try to throw a dart at Well, him? it's, it's a, it's... I just stop and hand to him and they have no fucking clue. So if you, if you're proficient in, in the tool with which you have on you, you get advantage on the roll. Oh. So if you have Viola proficiency, then you should have rolled with advantage. I do indeed. <laughs> you you rolled a twenty. It's probably as best as you're gonna get. Yeah. I'm assuming I got no uh, no. I, I've never heard AC shanties at all, even though I no matter where I've gone. Uh, probably not. No. Um, you're again. This is the most that any one of your kind really travels is this far south. <laughs> uh, I um, imagine I probably caught some odd books people have never seen glide before. Yeah, no. Um, it, it's A lot of people are like, there's a tall gray woman walking through the crowd. I know some marching songs. I don't know how well that translates. I'm just going to sit down next to him and I'm going to open up my anatomy book. Okay. So as you start reading, um, it basically confirms everything you've ever heard about orcs that they are tough son of bitches. Fuck. Um, they usually range over seven foot tall, easily, um, and most of them are uh, inclined toward uh, higher quantities of muscle, including the women, and especially. So, Tarvos, want to take first watch with me? Yeah, can't speak. I'm not gonna do Tarvos. <laughs> Fuck that. I'll I'll take first watch with you, mate. Um, so yeah, well, no, Tarvos will agree, but I'm not. I'm just gonna say that I'm not gonna do the. I'm not gonna do the Tarvos thing. It's not gonna work. I feel that. The Tarvos. Well, uh, I'll be uh, gone for eight hours. Alright. I'm gonna see if I can find any, like, any of the crew to teach me the sea shanties. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so as you guys shove off, actually, um, they begin to. Um, singing sing uh, sea shanties as they head out of out of port and onto the open water um they uh it's a sea shanty uh, generally speaking about a woman who's waiting for her man to come back from whatever from the ocean hey head up she rises way i play way too much fucking black flag <laughs> I mean, yeah. Is there I such a thing? Chanties by fucking heart. What the fuck is Fiddles McGinty? Oh, it's tavern music. 
So yeah, you guys head out on your journey. Um. Uh, so, uh, things on the ship run very smoothly, almost like clockwork, and the crew is very much dedicated to their captain, as you can tell. Um, when it comes to Captain Madrigal, he is a uh, very prestigious figure among just sailors in general, and especially merchant sailors. He runs uh, the Admiral's best ship, so obviously he, he would be. Um, your your route, as he will explain to you at some point, will take you um, along the coast of Serpent House, around the edge of the continent, and then up toward Bardego. Um, alrighty. And now, we get to roll for random encounters. Uh, let me see what I exactly I did with this thing. I was like, yeah. uh, I was hoping I could maybe play, start playing sea shanties now. Sure. Right. You, you learn a like number of sea shanties. Some. You're gonna probably learn the the crew's entire repertoire by the time you're done with this. <laughs> awesome. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, so, uh, the trip to Bardego from here should take 12 days, if I calculated that correctly, with favorable winds. During which time I will roll on the random encounter list for every five days of the journey. So I'm going to roll for basically two of these. And. Uh, yeah, so let's roll. Cool. Alrighty. This is going to be interesting. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What does this one do? Nope, not that one. We want what about this one. Nope. What about this one? Hello, son. What are you doing here? Hello. That'll work. Don't yell at your dad. So, uh, we're <laughs> skipping ahead after quite a lot of time uh, has passed. About ten days into your journey, uh, you have <sighs> rounded on the map. You can see where White Bridge is. There's that little cape right there. You have rounded that and are just about to kind of cut across that that bay um, when there is an alarm uh, rung for an all-hands-on-deck. Um, we'll rush up. Up we go. Right. Who was uh, on watch during this? Uh, pick someone. Uh, I'll be watching. Grisha. I'll be one. So Grisha, Grisha and Grid were both on watch. Both of you make me perception checks. No. And I'll hurry up with uh, bow drawn. Say. Well, my my body is the D8 now, isn't it? What? I think it's D8. Uh, level five. Ooh. I think it is. <laughs> not twenty. Maybe not though. Fourteen. Okay. Looking out ahead of you, uh, where the um, the guy in the crow's nest was, is pointing, you see uh, forming in the ocean uh, a massive whirlpool. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, the captain. I, I, I've never been on a boat before, but uh, that looks bad. Yeah, it's really bad. It's a whirlpool. Um... Uh, the captain uh, rushes out of his quarters to see the swirl in the water. Um, and uh, says, All right, men! We've got a live one! All hands on deck! What's happening? Well, fucking we've got whirlpool, a giant mate. fucking whirlpool. <laughs> whirlpool. In front of us, I'd assume that's not good. Not very. Hey, look, a ready a dart just in case. And do we have to like row away oh, or yes. is there something to shoot? We're gonna try something. I need you all, I need all of your hands on this. Alright. You, and he points to uh, 
Grisha and Orion, why not? Go, you look strong. Go grab those ropes and tie them down fast. James, see what you can do about the wind. If anyone else can help with wind-based things to try and blow us south of this thing, that would be fantastic. Well, I guess I'll follow James. Um, Alright, so I'll rope things down. Um, what kind of check? Uh, you... It would be a strength check. But actually, for two, yeah, strength check to try and batten down the ropes uh, correctly. Can I use Thunder Wave to, like, use the force? To try to if you it? have proficiency in um, water vehicles, then you can get advantage on the strength check. Unfortunately, I do not, yep. but that's still a team. Cool. Alright, so you think you're. Is it, just, is it just raw strength or is it strength athletics? That's just raw strength. If it was athletics, that'd be a. 18. It's not a feat of athleticism. It's yeah. a, it's pulling down a fully furled oh. sail, fully unfurled sail. Oh, All right, uh, Grisha, not as much help. <laughs> Can I actually really... surge to pull down more ropes? Question mark. Uh, sure, if you want to, yeah. And bardic inspiration. Add D8. Okay. Ah, shit! I don't have bardic inspiration added, so I'm just gonna. Roll this it's gonna be really jank that's a 16 total with party okay. inspiration cool so we'll call that two successes um uh uh captain magical turns to uh Pagula. like you you're small um climb up to the crow's nest and keep watch for us you can be a runner between oh, our right. guy in the crow's nest and the people down below so uh i guess you did you realize you suggested guess. earlier no. Do I have to roll an athletics check or anything to get up uh, there? I don't either athletics or acrobatics. Uh, Your choice. Okay. I don't Once think Thunder Wave will help. Thunder Wave will not help. No, it will do damage to the boat. Well, I was trying to get if I did Thunder Wave like, at I'm the sails. Go he's like the force of okay. No, it's not wind based. Also, I'm spells. rolling in Discord because my Wi Fi is out. Okay. So I can't get on roll 20. Wait, no, that's actually supposed I to be a plus gust 8. gust of wind. Shit, that's only a 13. That's not any better. 13? Okay. Well, it, it's fine. It, you just needed to beat a 10. Um, so you don't fall to the deck and die. <laughs> um, but you're still getting used to mm -hmm. climbing the ropes a little bit. Um, you are a fairly quick little bugger, though. So you manage to get up there pretty fast. Um, you start relaying information between um, the crow's nest and the rest of the crew down below. Uh, so we'll call Wonderful. that three successes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Grid, you said you were going with James, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So James takes out uh, a book from underneath his uh, leather coat um, and begins uh, moving his hand around it in a circle um, and then uh, pointing it at the sails. And you can feel uh, visibly gusts of wind begin to push the sails uh, oh, accurate. I'll see what time of day is it? away. This is like midday. It's like the middle of the day. Uh, when this is happening. Oh, what I was is that? Except, like, middle of the night, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker type bullshit. <laughs> he's trying all no. he can, but he's not, um, he's not really making too much of an impact on the sails. If you have something that's like Gust of Wind or anything like that, you can try and help him. I don't think I have anything like that. See, Kenrick has literally nothing he can use in this situation to even remotely help, so he's just standing around trying not to die. Or if you can think of any other spell to cast, you can also do that as well. I don't have, have spell any useful spells. Don't... Not in this situation, anyways. I mean, I could cast Expeditious Retreat on the boat, and for 10 minutes, he can use his <laughs> bonus action to dash. It's not a creature, so no. God. Uh, you could you could cast it on crew members and make them faster though. Mm, but I can only yeah. cast it one person at a time. Yeah, just I'll pick someone good then. Or you can do it on yourself and you can help out doing other things. I don't have a lot of components. <laughs> Take some. Remember, you 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 don't you need components you if use... you have a holy symbol. Yeah. Oh. Right, right. Um. So is it raining like really bad? 
No, it's just it's like the middle of the day in the middle of the sun, and then this fucking whirlpool just appeared in the middle. Of the oh, ocean, okay. Right in your path. You're trying to avoid it as quickly as you can. You gotta think fast. I have nothing. I can't help him. Yeah, I literally can't help him. I got nothing. All right, I'm holding on to the side of the ship. Okay, so you guys are gonna pass your turns. Yeah, I guess because I literally have nothing that has gust, wind, or water or anything. But you could do other things to help out too if you can think of them. Yeah, literally, just be creative. Think of something. I mean, I can do. I try to think of something with thunder wave. True. Dude, I literally have nothing to do that would help in this situation. I don't think created uh, or destroyed water would help here. It, well, it doesn't have to be magic based. It can be other things that you do around the ship. I, moving, got, moving I guess ship, I want to go help them ropes. pull down ropes. Uh, what, can, what can I do? I'm, I'm sorry, I can't help you with anything, mate. I'm just going to go help them pull down ropes. Kenrick is actual dead. Kenrick is actually dead weight in the situation. Make uh, make an athletics check, Grid. Athletics. Yep. Sorry, not athletics. Sorry, it's just regular pure strength roll. Oh, I was about to fucking say. No, I was, that was my bad. It's just a strength roll. Fuck. <laughs> That's a saving throw. Oh wait, strength throw. What's a strength throw? You go to your where your strength is and click on the word strength. Oh. There you go. That's better. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. So you're you're trying to help out as best you can. You're kind of fumbling with stuff because you don't know how to tie sailors' knots, but you at least help them use your weight to like pull the sails back and try and angle them to to push the boat uh, out of the way of the uh, the vortex. Okay. Um. So uh, let's see. Let's call that one, two, three successes. We got one more round of this. Let's see how well you do. So, uh, as you guys head toward this thing, the boat's starting to turn off to uh, your right hand side, um, away from the vortex. You can almost feel the deck like tilting slightly to the right as it uh, is turning and also simultaneously moving slightly inward toward the vortex. Hala's going to grab on to anything he can with an absolute Yeah, I'm going to brace myself. This is like fucking Pirates yep. of the Caribbean at this point. Right, you attempt to brace yourself, and that's when I need everybody to roll me dexterity saving throws. Fucking hate you. I... Uh, hold up, hold up, four. Oh, 17. Mind. You didn't inspire anyone beforehand, and also... 17. 19. Cool. No, 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 19. Dirty 20. All right, cool. So that's pretty much everybody's saving. <laughs> um, so while it is uh, strange, you guys have gotten your sea legs at this point and are able to maneuver the deck still without um, falling over on your asses, essentially. Mm. So uh, now at this point, uh, a couple of the ropes that were not tied down as well as you thought they were um, begin to come unfurled from their uh, whatever they're called, bowling pins? Uh, what, are they, what are they called? Belaying pins? Belaying pins. Yeah. Um, and they begin to whip around the deck uh, in a like a frantic motion. Um, shit! People are ducking out of the way and shit. If anyone wants to try and grab it and fasten it down again, you have to make a uh, dexterity check. Straight dexterity. Not even with a 10 foot pole. I'll go for what? it. 15. Okay. 13. 13. Alright, so Orion unfortunately did not make this one. God damn it. Was it a 14 DC? 15. Uh, you uh, take <laughs> one, one point of bludgeoning damage as the large heavy rope slaps into your midsection and knocks you to the ground. Um, Grid, on the other hand, does manage to grab it and uh, at least pull it taut. Um, a bunch can of the I other crew rush in and tie it off to the side uh, before it can do any more damage. What'd you say, Hunter? Did I try and get one? There was only one rope that broke. Oh, only one? You, you, yeah, it was only it was only one of them. It was one of the ones that oh, Grisha had tried to secure earlier with that six. <laughs> uh, that didn't work out very well. Um, okay, cool. So that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. 
Um, at this point, uh, James is going to redouble his efforts on the spell he's casting. That's just not... He's not doing too well, dudes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to go back over to him and cast Thaumaturgy, I guess. And like just like kind of try to yell in the direction and make a wind force. Okay, that's not going to work. You are yelling very loudly like at a sail. <laughs> so congratulations. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to uh, inspire, yeah, the wizard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Was it a D8? Yeah. Let me pull up his thing real quick. Oh, God damn it! See, I knew I forgot something. I didn't have these two guys up. And his brother. Where's James? There he is. Okay, there we go. Actually, that makes it better. So he got a 7 on his roll. Uh, 7 on the Bardic Inspiration for a total of 21. Yo. Because there's also a plus 7 in Archon. So, nice. at this point, uh, with the Inspiration, he like closes ours, focuses really hard and then whips one final burst of air into the sails um, to, and the ship you feel visibly and uh, and tactically lurches to the side <laughs> um, out of the way. You can feel that you can hear the mast, the wood of the mast, like cracking almost from the uh, extended pressure that he's putting on it with his spell. Um, but it does Boy. manage to scoot the ship just out of the way of the whirlpool and you guys managed to pass it by without getting sucked to the bottom of the ocean there you go Pela's just going to slump down and curl into a very small ball <laughs> hold on let's not do that again well that was interesting we we'll jump down back down to deck I'm gonna stand up after getting slapped by that rope oh that was fun. What was that bullshit? That was fun. <laughs> These kind of things happen sometimes when you're out at sea. You just have to kind of adapt to the situation. God, I fucking hate the ocean. Well, that's I don't know about you guys. I'm a blast. <laughs> that's because you're fucking you crazy. Didn't get, you didn't get hit by a heavy ass rope. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Sorry about that, Ryan. Right? Not... But I tied that. But I tied that down better. You good, mate? I'm not exactly used to tying these either, but we learn at least some of the stuff in Ranger Core. I've been on the ship a few times, so. You have? I haven't. It's my first time. Most I've been in is a canoe. Mm. This is a little bit different. Anyway, is that, is that all? Can, uh, do we go back to watch now? Or? Yeah, basically you guys go about your day. Um, the, uh, the days on the ocean are not super eventful. Everyone's just kind of there doing their job. You know, wake up, do what you're supposed to do. Eat food every now and then. Keep an eye on the horizon. That kind of thing. Um, this I goes on for this goes on for about another uh, another week. No, I'm sorry, another uh, five days, just about. Um, when uh, you guys uh, again, the the ship is just kind of cruising along, along the ocean. Um, and then all of a sudden you feel something like jostle the entire ship. Oh no, no what? that's just not right. Did we oh, hit something? Okay. Off the uh, uh, off the left side of the boat you see this giant geyser of water uh, wow. fly up off the side. I'm gonna run upstairs if I wasn't already on deck. I think... I don't think we hit something. I think something might have hit us. Oh... <sighs> I'm gonna get down from like the front of the ship, I guess, because I was just kind of sitting over the edge. Uh, 
Do I know what this is? Since I've been out at the sea before. Or have I never seen this? What happened? Have I seen something like this before since I've been on boats? Oh yeah, it's a whale. It's a big ass whale. Oh! That's a big fucking whale. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so looking off the side of the ship, you see um, a sperm whale. Um, oh, basically the a little bit larger in length uh, than the ship itself. Thing's fucking massive. Yeah, it's a massive whale. What in the name of the ship? And it's just kind of all... hanging out along the side of your boat. That that's big. Yep. Fucking ocean's scary, mate. You sure about that? This is amazing. Yeah. Seems kind of pretty. Oh yeah, it's pretty, but like, fucking, you can just knock the ship over whenever it wants to. Um, a lot the of the for a lot of you, in fact, for pretty much all of you except for Grid, this is a first time experience seeing this thing. I've grappled with damn yetis before. This cloak is proof of it. I think I can. Have if I remember okay, yeah, but I don't think I'm fair sure if I don't think it. I don't think Yeti is as majestic as this thing. Mm -hmm. Oh no, definitely not. It is. Uh, by the way, this is uh, grid. This is bigger than the larger, <laughs> larger whales you see. Yeah. This one this is a little bit bigger. This one is gargantuan as opposed to huge. I believe is what it is. Can I run a uh, detect magic on this thing? Uh, yeah, sure. It's just a whale. Okay. Not, not magical at all. It's just, just a baby. Just it's just an old whale. whale. It's an old whale. Not even old. It, it could just be an. Well, it could just be whale. an adult. I mean, these things are usually not this big, so I don't know why it's this big. Oh, look. is there anything? Is there anything else that's this big, on the ocean? Ah, not that I've seen. Have I? Nope. If I've seen a kraken before. Nope. Um, if you had uh, ever seen books. a kraken, you'd be dead. No, I've only seen a kraken in books. Or dead. Uh, yeah, you can be. Or okay, you'd be uh, a kraken, or, or you'd be dead. Or great old one warlock. <laughs> okay, you'd be a cultist, great old warlock, or dead. Well, actually, there is a kraken warlock from UA from a while ago. Or uh, yeah, did you forget about the Kraken Warlock? And there's also the new one, the Lurker in the Deep Warlock. Let's get to Why Kraken, make boys. Because Ocean Warlocks are cool. Magic. I want to, like, write this, like, I... kind of draw how big this thing is compared to the ship in, like, one of my journals. I can't even fucking say anything about Ocean Warlocks not being cool because I literally play a Triton Warlock. There you go. <laughs> if anybody knows, it would be you. Hmm. Alright, cool. So, uh, yeah, for for about half an hour, this thing kind of, like, hangs out by your boat. Occasionally sprays the crew with water. <laughs> They're like, ah, fuck. They're, like, covered in whale blowhole juice. For a while. <laughs> it's kind of nasty, but eh, whatever. Isn't that just water? Um, yeah. Before, well, it comes from within the whale's body, so there's probably yeah. some biomatter in there somewhere. There's some mucus in it, probably. Lovely. Um, so. And then uh, after about half an hour, it it uh, disappears beneath the waves and leaves your boat too as it is. That was a little weird. I'm definitely putting that down in my book. They're not usually that big. Hey, I can ask the cook if he needs help. So I'm just going to keep looking in the ocean. So does there need to be any heavy lifting at all? Uh, there's always ah. need for heavy lifting on the boat. Oh, I'm not going to help out with that then. Because okay. big Goliath. Lift the boat, obviously, and just carry it to our destination. Hey, I, I have a potion of water breathing, not a potion of water walking. You also Jeez. don't have a potion of fucking giant strength. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Joke. Potion, I'm, I'm well aware of that. Not be a fucking potion of water breathing, potion of water walking, potion of giant strength, potion of giant size. Didn't you know them water giants? They'd be real big nowadays. 
I mean, frost giants could actually walk Wasn't on water. Wasn't Devin in the campaign where fucking water giant just came and wrecked, wrecked house? Wouldn't those just be storm giants? No, wait, no, that was a crab. That was a giant crab. It wasn't a giant crab, it was like a, a thousand giant crabs. Hey, there was only one really big giant crab. The, the rest were like, like, Mirelurk sized crabs. Anyway, point being. You uh, call Mirelurks little, and I'm going to shoot you for your stupidity. They're, they're little in comparison, okay? <laughs> after the, uh, after the tenth day or so, um, you guys officially pass past the um, the borders of Serpent House and into the space of Gorgon House. You guys are traveling basically following the coastline but you can't see, you, you've never been able to see it from where you are. You're just kind of roughly following the shape of the continent as you go along in the middle of the ocean. Okay. Oh, uh, I'm going to go back to the front of the boat and I'm going to continue to look into the water for after the strange thing after the twelfth day um, the uh, the bell is rung again on the upper deck um, and you can see uh, from where you are um, that there are sails on the horizon another ship is headed toward you well that doesn't look good nope it's not I'm gonna go over to a just gonna kind of get ready for some stuff to happen. Are we called up or? Uh, you could investigate if you want to, but it's not like an. Alarm. Yes, I would like to investigate. <laughs> well, is anyone telling the people downstairs? Because I'm assuming it's Kenrick and. Gritton That's what the bell is for. They reacted. Yeah, it's all, all hands on deck. Yeah. Well, has anyone rung it? The, the bell is like, hey, we found a ship. Just letting everyone know. He literally just said he wrote it, the bell rang. My bad. I'm a little bit tired. Okay, I woke up three or not even at three. I woke up like one a.m. Christ. Ugh. DG, how much sleep have you had the past few days again? How much have I what? How much sleep have you had the past few days again? Hey, I took a three-hour nap hours. more than uh, session. Ten that hours. Was that fucking like from like ten p.m. to one one a.m. So I don't want to hear it. Yeah, just about ten hours with about uh, twenty twenty five hours of work in between i haven't had it as bad as bg but it's still fucking i'm a little bit tired all right yeah gotta love weekends anyway um, <laughs> not delusional just simply a little bit loopy. the uh the captain takes up a, a spyglass of his and points it toward the ship um and then uh looks to whoever's on deck, which I'm assuming is everybody at this point, and says, Yep. You're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna come up here. We got something to talk about before they reach us. I'm gonna go up there. Alright. He hands, will sit, uh, sit it will sit crisscross applesauce on the floor. He'll hand the Orion pirates. the spyglass and says Take a look at that. I take a look at it. Alright, so you can see the ship from here um is from from where you can see uh, onto the deck, you can see it's crewed entirely by dwarves. Um, uh, there is no nameplate, um, but there is a, uh, a figurehead on the front of the ship of a treasure chest uh, uh, carved out of wood. It's kind of like hanging off of the the little front part. Dwarves in Gorgon House. With tell me, no uh, nameplate. Tell me, do you see a name on there anywhere? No. Exactly. That ship is called the Fortune. I know it well because I used to captain it. And that figurehead, very distinctive. But it seems they've scratched the name off its hull. I wonder why they would want to do that. Escapees? They are dwarves, and we are in Gorgon House again. They are dwarves. But why would they? Pirates. Why would they have done that in the first place? Why would they not have stowed away or found other ways out? The, the it's pirates, a mostly. Possibly, I'm not yeah, sure exactly what's going on. about all this. I would be cautious, is all I'm saying. And I'm going to all take. Right. Uh, I'm going to take two of you with me. I'm assuming they're going to want to parlay. I'll go with you. I'm better in the back. 
I'll be watching from a distance. Uh, I'll go. Meanwhile, we'll... Oh, you said my bow had a, like, something else since I got a scope? What would that be? Uh, I think that was the plus one to hit. Well, you said it would get one, plus one on top of a few other Plus things. one to attack and damage rolls. It was plus one to attack and damage rolls. But it's not magical. Okay. If you find you somewhere, if you go back in the recap and find where I said it does other things, then I'd be happy to give it to you, but I don't remember right now. Matt trying to get his weapon with built-in fucking sharpshooter. I thought it would increase the range, because, like, I remember VG distinctively saying it would give me other things, like, as time goes on. I don't know if that was in the... No, you have to put no, for the first, to more money For the it. first round of, of upgrades, it was just enough to get you to plus one status with the bow. Yeah, I'll go look for the exact spot, but I do remember something else. But uh, it's fine. I don't care enough. Um, so, uh, fucking, they... Eventually, after about uh, five to ten minutes of sailing, they uh, pull up alongside the other ship, which has dropped anchor at this point. Um, and uh, one of the crew uh, from the other ship calls over. Hello. We'd like to parlay. That's all right with you, Captain. I'm going to immediately start looking for crystals in their skulls. <laughs> um, a lot of them have the scar... Hello. But none of them have the crystal. I'm gonna stand about 120 feet, like, away from the nearest dwarf. No, I well, guess you're, it's actually you're, too short. You're for still a ship, on, isn't it? You're still on your own ship right now. Yeah. Um, there's, there's like a, there's a about a 30 foot gap between uh, your ship and theirs. Um, and then they, uh, the your crew brings out a, a gangplank that bridges the gap between the two. And you all head over. Uh, the two of you, I think it was Grisha and Orion, right? No, it was Grisha and Grid. Okay, Grisha and, and Grid. Orion's gonna stay on our ship. Go over with Monsieur Madrigal. Uh, and you begin to head over to the ship. Alright. Uh, sorry, let me do something real quick here. Are they all dwarfs? Yeah, they're all or they're just like, yeah. Uh, sorry, I had to reset the map. For some reason, it didn't save the last time I did this thing. Okay, that's good enough. Alright, so there you go. So there's basically your ships pulled alongside each other. Actually, this I'm gonna flip this around. Uh. Um, and then you guys, so Grid and Grisha. are on the ship with the captain. Is here. There, uh, and then. Oh, just again, plank out of curiosity. Ryan, I'm gonna put it on there in a second. Pagula, Kendrick, and Tarvos. I think that's everybody. No, oh, and your dog is here too, because of course. <laughs> it's a big dog. <laughs> He's got a, he's got a weird fucking hitbox because uh, tokens are stupid. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Where did Ryan go? Oh, I moved over here. Sorry, I'm zoomed in really far. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Okay, so that's everybody. And then let me get uh, grab James. He's gonna be over here. Uh, he's gonna be up toward the back of the ship over there. Can I stand behind somebody so they can't see me? Yeah, I mean, you can move your character where you want to. My Wi-Fi is out. I can't get on roll 20. I know. I'm moving you around. Uh, I'll You're put you... Behind Elf. I'll put you behind Kenrick. It will be... Neither of you can make this roll 20. This is great. Also, I don't know why this didn't save either. 
but This is a map. Let's me know that we're gonna be fighting some. Uh, it's possible to fight someone. That or maybe <laughs> I mean, it's always possible for something it's else. It's always or possible. Maybe to fight this someone. is the bait. Maybe that's the point. Maybe he wants us to start a fight. We can't uh, win. It's, it's up to you. Uh, and then let me grab. Where the fuck did I put the dwarves? This is just the generic dwarf token that I could find on roll 20. Uh, let's see, how many of them did I set up? Uh, I think it was that many. So you've got this guy, there, 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 and there, we'll say. And then the rest of these guys. Put here. Okay. So there's various crew scattered around. There's a group of... Uh, they're all dwarves, despite what their tokens are. Um... Uh, and the the group of this group of four like meets with your group of three. Okay. Uh, and they begin trying to um, uh, to, to talk to the captain. Say, "Hi, uh, we're uh, we're looking we're looking for supplies. We're running a, a bit low, actually, on our way back from uh, from our our last run. I was hoping you had some extra. Maybe you could spare. We could give you a trade or something for it. Uh, hopefully." Um, at which point the captain says, no, I don't think we will. In fact, I'm curious as how to, how you came to, uh, come into contact with this ship. The last captain oh. I knew hadn't come back from their run to Gorgon House. Do you happen to know where she might be? Uh, this, the dwarf, uh, started to stand like, I, but... I, I don't know what you're talking about. I we we don't have a insight check. We don't have a captain either. On, you're across on the, ship. the fucking boat. Fuck off. You can't even hear them. Fine, I'll make an insight check. Hey, yeah, fuck off. Yeah, I don't think I need to. It's pretty obvious he's bullshitting. <laughs> Does oh. a natural twenty? Yeah, he's. Is uh, it obvious? It's obvious the captain knows something's up. And this guy was caught in a lie, and he's not very good at it. <laughs> um, he's like, oh, shit, I didn't know you knew that, Captain. Fuck. Um, Welp. <laughs> uh, so that's basically what the, the vibe you get. Like, he's, like, completely taken aback and off guard now. Like, his ruse has been immediately broken. He didn't even get a chance to try and persuade the captain. Wait, listen, uh, we're just... We're just humble merchants passing by. Like, we're not... Uh, we're not trying to, to start nothing. Or, we, we don't even have a captain on this ship. It's this more of a democracy, too. really. And Oh, this isn't working, is it? Yeah, All right, boys. You. Take them. <laughs> the, I... <laughs> the eight people on deck with you currently uh, no, draw, no. <laughs> draw oh, daggers. No. And I would like to... You can roll know. initiative. Know. As well as everyone yeah, else. Can no, there's no bargaining here. Peel is still hidden, so like they can't see him, right? Yeah, he's on the other boat. Oh, which okay, reminds gosh. me, I need to put the gangplank down. So give me a second, real quick. God, fuck oh, my this ass. is so shit. So, Every time. Same for me. This is how he fucking died Sunday. I rolled shit initiative. Yeah. So did I. Oh, hey, yeah. you're not playing, hey, you're not playing a wizard now, so you're not gonna die in one hit. That's true. Don't worry, you're not killed, little gas. Yeah, I'm playing a frontliner in the back lane this time. It's completely different. This is going to be a really janky solution. 11 but... for initiative. I mean, these guys can't be that strong. I could probably just cast one Thunder Wave and they're done. 
Ich habe eher noch. Oh, das ist ein Fall. Ich kann dir das nicht sagen, aber... That's one jank ass gank plank. Kind of, yeah. Is this jank plank? Oh, of course, not 20. <laughs> oh, they're all going to place. Nope. Nope. I've never seen this washbuckler stat block, so this will be interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, how many bandits do I have? One, two, three, four. Cool, I have one, two, three, four rebels. And you guys, what did Payula get for initiative? Eleven. We all rolled absolutely ass. And Kinrick? Seven. I mean, hey, I'd rather roll ass on initiative than ass on a lot of those important checks that we okay. could have actually failed. And I'm gonna go ahead on. and roll for Clyde. Oh yeah, like the time you rolled, you you. I could be thinking of someone else because I remember some. I was in a game where someone did this. They rolled three nat one. No, they didn't roll three nat ones because they died after the first two. But they rolled two nat ones in a row on death saves. That's a fucking rip, dude. <laughs> Dude, the DM was, oh no no, 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 no it was three because the DM was nice to have one more roll. Rip. Like here, I'll give you advantage on this death save. Rolls on that one. Like listen, I can't do more for you. You're dead. And just prepare. All right. Like imagine rolling three nat ones for death saves. Isn't a nat one an automatic an uh, automatic two failed death save? Yeah, the DM was that nice enough. Oh. <laughs> like everyone was so like speechless, for lack of a better word. Okay, I think that's everybody in initiative for now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, the captain goes first. <laughs> because he rolled a natural 20, and he's a high level rogue. Okay. Uh, fucking. So, drawing cutlasses has a thing happen. He's going to go up. Uh, actually, he's gonna. He's gonna hold his action for someone to come within a certain distance of him. Uh, to attack with the rapier that he has on him. I know I said cutlass earlier, but it's a rapier. Yeah, so he's gonna hold his action and just hold his ground. This guy's gonna run up to you, prompting the attack from the captain. Oh, sneak attack! Disgusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. it's cool. Normal roll. 14 to hit. That doesn't hit. So he takes a, a swipe at this guy, but the dwarf is small and surprisingly nimble and dodges underneath the attack. Uh, the next guy is actually a bandit, so he's gonna have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Get to about there. Uh. Uh, he's just gonna dash and get up to you. So that's his turn. The next one. Five, ten. And actually, the they, first guy didn't take an they attack. Don't like, they don't like the big grace. <laughs> so they're uh, they're gonna make two attacks: one with a dagger and one with a rapier. Um, and each one's going to make two attacks on Grisha. Ew. So one. Good luck, Grisha. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting six attacks my way. Uh, no, just just four. 
Just four. Just four. So we'll do dagger Hit. rapier for the first guy. Miss. Swashbuckler dagger. <laughs> rapier. Natural one and a natural twenty. <laughs> Well, we already then, so he, first weapon. of all, he has to roll on the natural one table now, because we do that now. A little accident. Oh my god. I think that's the one where he shits his pants. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> uh... <laughs> okay. Yeah, he definitely soils himself. Now I need to roll to see if it's just piss. <laughs> it is. It's just he just he he's, isn't. He he freaks out. He's been, he's been freaking out this whole time. Like he's been sweating a lot of things. Yeah, could me. The little guy, poor poor little dude, like pisses himself <laughs> with a net one, and then after he does that, he's like, "Well, can't get any worse than this now." And then he like goes at you with full force and hits you with a natural twenty. <laughs> All right, Let's so him. combine uh, I'm that's gonna eight stones plus endurance on the on the crit. Eleven, okay. Roll your d12. It's a d12 plus three. Cool. So thirteen. I take none of it. You take none of that damage. So you just take eight piercing damage from the rapier of one of them. That was a dagger. That was a uh, rapier. Uh, from whatever it was. This rebel's going to run up to grid. And actually, he's going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And do like a quick run around you. Hit you with two Thank attacks. You. Dagger. Oof, that one hits. That one hits. 22, 19. Cool. So a total of 13 points of damage. 13. Not only did he piss himself, he also didn't get the damage of that crit. That guy got fucked. Okay. Cool. Uh, and that's all he can do for his turn. Oh, Next whoops. one up. A bandit. 5, 10. He's going to take a shot with his scimitar. Twenty-two hits. Nice. Five more points of slashing. Okay. Can I uh do this at any point? Can I use my necrotic shroud at any point? Uh, on your turn. Yeah, take this on your turn. That got an action. Oh, on my turn. On your turn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, an action on your turn, so it even takes up your attacks. Yeah. Uh. Five, but it's worth 10, it. Fifteen. <laughs> Twenty. Yeah. Twenty-five. Thirty. Thirty-five. He's gonna dash up to the captain. Oh yeah. And now it's Paiula's turn. So because you don't have oh, roll wow. 20, let me explain this thing to you. How, so How far away am I from, from people? Uh, 60 feet from the nearest guy. And that's you're on the okay, other ship, far? so you have to run across the gangplank 60 feet to get to the next guy. Okay, but so what I'm if not... I just moved a bit closer and threw darts at them? Uh, if, you, if you wanted to, that's the nearest guy, if you get close enough, is 55 feet away. So with the darts range of 60, you'd be rolling with disadvantage. Yeah, I, think, that's... I think it's a max range of 60. Could be it wrong. is a max range of 60, yes. So I'll move close enough to hit the 55 guy, and then I'll throw a fucking dart at him. Okay. Why are you not just running in and punching him on the dick? Wait, you're right! Because the dwarves are too short. Moves, so I'm just gonna run by my 35, and then I'm gonna fucking throw a dart at the bastard. The dwarves are too short to be, t to be punched in the dick. Let's reset you. Uh, I have an idea. No one's gonna like my that's, idea, but I do have an idea. Hit. 18 to hit? Yeah. 18 hits. Great, one second. Matt, what'd you say? I have Seven an idea. Days. No one's gonna like my idea, but I do have an idea. Why won't we like it? Because it. Y'all better hope I don't roll on that one. <laughs> Please don't kill me. And I guess I'm gonna use my bone. Mm, I can't bonus action dash. That is big sad. 
Uh, Actually, I can spend a key point to do that, so I'm going to spend a key point and step with the wind. Okay. So you want to get run up to him? Yes. Okay. How much damage did you do on that dart again? Seven. Seven damage. And I believe that's all I can do. Wait, I can attack twice. Mm, not after you bonus action. That's how being a dash. second level, uh, fifth level monk works. Oh yeah, right. So you got one more attack if you want to. Yeah, one sec. Choo -choo. I was thinking of my barbarian for a second. Damn it, fourteen. Gotta remember about that extra. Yeah, the guy that you're in front of is is one of the bandits. So yes, it does hit. Yay! One Choo -choo. second, I gotta. Oh, what's, the fuck hold out on, what, what's your what's your modifier? Five. Uh, eight. Eight. No, not not to hit, yeah, but to, for damage. It's oh, five, right? Yeah, five. Uh, you kill him. <laughs> you had four oh. HP, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Or you well, you can you can either kill him or knock him out. One with two. fucking dart. I'm going to fucking murder uh -huh. him. You're gonna what? I'm gonna fucking murder him. Okay, well he's dead. R.I.P. Motherfucker. You run in like Kali Ma his balls. <laughs> I crave numbers. Well, the thing is, though, it'd be more like monkey grabbing Peach because they're the same height. Well, at least similar heights because that guy's. I'm 2-2, nice. two, two, Hunter! He's a dwarf! <sighs> Orion, you're up. VG, is this crossbow loaded? Uh. Yeah. Cool. Yes, it was. Do you have the stats for a ballista? <laughs> it's in the DMG, oh, that's all I know! <laughs> Oh, fuck, Matt. <laughs> Matt, you madman. Let me fucking control F fucking ballista. It is. Matt, I think <laughs> I know what you got planned, and I love this. Uh, I know it's at least 3d10. <laughs> it takes one action to load the weapon and one action to aim it. And then one it's action to loaded. fire it. It's already loaded, so you just have to aim it with an action and then one action to fire it as well. But is it even worth it at this point? I don't know. It does 3d10 piercing damage. Plank. Dude, it deals 3d10. Are, are you gonna blow the gangplank? He's feeling the, He's like gonna pierce a dwarf through the chest with a fucking. <laughs> I think he's bolt. probably more gonna hit their hit the hull of their ship. I could do that, but I kind of want the ship. Also, so... for for obvious reasons, ignore the cannons on each side of the ship. Those aren't there. It's just the, Wait, the only are ship map. to murder each other with cannons? I'm very confused. Well, cannons don't exist yet. <laughs> so. Oh, good point. I don't think I just take a normal shot with the bow. I have to be a normie. That one, that one turn to aim in. What is my proficiency bonus plus with three. this? Three? Your proficiency bonus Starting is plus three. Bad boy plus right here. Your ability is. Can the attack. Uh, natural one. Shitting me. Hey, guess what? Roll on that natural one table, boy. Oh God! What Matt, is it? Why? Roll. It's a no. It's if you go to the to the right hand side next to the gear on the, where the chat thing is. Oh, is it a macro? Yeah. No, there's a there's a whole fucking table full of it. It's you roll for the critical fail for ranged weapons. Oh. And then tell me what you get. Ammo accident. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I didn't get it. It says rolling one. Uh, your quiver spills over, and the remainder of your arrows and bolts uh, fall on the floor. Uh, just the type of ammo I was using, right? No, Not all of them. Uh, everything that you have uh, falls over onto the floor. And, and well, like, I had two quivers. Yeah, everything that you have falls onto the ground. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you don't move, you can use your bonus action uh, to pick up one, uh, one per round, and still fire. Oh, I do have a bonus. Or you can use your action to pick up two d8 and put them back into your quiver. But otherwise, you have to spend your bonus action each round to fire. Now. This upsets me greatly. Give me a second. Oh, I'll pick up fucking one. Alrighty, you have an arrow. God, dude, that's so pissed. <laughs> Literally the first round, too. I'm so glad I didn't fucking use the ballista. <laughs> right? And you could have fired a this one anyway, so. Yeah, oh, but I still would have fucking. In I might have impaled one of y'all. 
I don't think y'all want 3d10 plus yeah. 1d8 plus 4 plus if I use martial die. Oh fuck, I forgot the Because I, I also don't... Uh, wait, there's not critical... Is there critical effects table? Critical effects table for fucking siege weapon? Uh, yeah. Anything that rolls a, a critical fail. If it is a ranged weapon, it rolls on the, the ranged mishap. If it rolls on the... I meant as in one that's uh, actually set up and there isn't. For specifically oh, for siege it's weapons, for ranged no. weapons, it's for ranged weapons. Anything that has a range to it. Um, so now it's James's turn. He's gonna go five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Get right up as close as he can uh, to the edge, and then he's going to uh, pull out his book, um, swirl his hand around uh, in a circle, and then three rays of fire fly out of his hand. Uh, toward the um, the one who has his brother flanked behind Grave or uh, Grid, Graves, Grid. Yes. No, you're fine. I'm just I'm saying he's huh? gonna oh. he's gonna roll scorching ray three times. Damn. Okay. Who okay. is James? That hit me. Natural twenty. No, he's not firing at you. He's firing at the door. Oh, I was the same. We're on the same side, man. And twelve. Okay. So the last one doesn't. Oh, guys the last one dead. doesn't hit, but the, the previous two do. Uh, fucking Jesus Christ. And he rolls nearly 14, max damage. Twenty-five. It's 25, like that one scene. I think like episode fourteen I where where that. Caleb just incinerate this at turns a couple of bands. My internet is done. So 25 points of fire damage to that guy. That fucking hurt. <laughs> um, and that's all he can do on his turns. Let me go ahead and... forgot to mark off the... Uh, scorching ray. There it is. Cool. Is that guy dead behind me? Nope. He took a lot of damage, though. Nah. It's uh, the Blink Dog's turn. Blink Dog is... Blink dog, blink dog, blink dog. The blink dog is 70 feet from the nearest enemy. Uh, that, well, Clay can get 40 feet closer, or 30 feet closer, and teleport 40 feet. Uh, it goes out in the gangplate and then teleports up to the dude. Oh, he's technically 75 feet away. Does he have any other movement besides that or no? Uh, no, that's it. That's his full movement. Oh, he's got his action to dash, right? Uh, teleport uh, teleporting was his action. That's true. It is. Okay, cool. So that's all you can do for now. He's up next to Payula now. Grisha, you're up. Hey, uh, can I zone, like, all four of these guys in, like, I, I don't know how the exact house zoning works for Thunderwave. Uh, I've never gotten that. Correctly. I just posted this in another thing. Let me find you it. You posted again. it, yeah, Sunday. You can get all four of these guys. She should be able to. You can get all four of these guys, like right here. All right. Or you can I'm get to, uh, all three of these if you want. All right, I'm gonna go there. for all four of these so that's guys. The, and I'm the, going that is the area of Thunder Wave that you can do. So you could, yeah, you could get all four of them. I'm gonna get all four of those guys, mm -hmm. and we'll cast Thunder Wave at third level. Cool. So three Constitution saving throws. Let me uh, do the cast from the Swashbucklers, and then four. Fourth one from the. Uh, and then. Fail! 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 Jesus Christ. As I basically just fucking s just do the somatic and just scream at them. They all fail. Uh, like I just so that's yell 20 at points them of damage. I just yell at them. The um the the bandit to your left, uh his head explodes. <laughs> from the like sonic I basically waves. just foos throws off. That that's how I'm casting. Yeah, and his body goes flying was it fifteen feet or ten feet? Ten feet? Five, ten. They're like flying into like a, a bunch of crates and stuff, and he's completely 100% dead immediately from the casting of the spell. Uh, everyone else takes 20. And it's pushed back 10 feet. 5, 10. It's 
20, 5, 10. And Six, as 20, a bonus action, 5, 10. Hey, Orion! Have an inspiration! I don't think I'm within 30 feet of you. Nope. Oh, you're right. He's on the other uh, side. You know what? Ball Crusher, have an inspiration. Okay. Viola has Bardic Inspiration die. Oh, wow! Is that a D6, Hey, uh, hold up, hold up. Right? Let's let you know. D8, I think. You can add a D8. It's a D8 now. And you can also add it to damage. Wonderful. Ew, Valor. College of Valor. Disgusting. Yum, <laughs> College of Valor. You're just saying that because you don't have inspiration. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> uh, and I, I think... And uh, keep in mind, that's, in, that's all of your uh, thing... You can just add a D8 to your damage next time you make an attack, or if you were to get hit, you can just say, oh, hey, I'm going to add a D8 to my AC as a react. Oh. oh. I can deal 48 plus 4 if Hunter uh, inspires me. And you know what? That's wonderful, because my, my AC is already at 20, so that can just that can only go well. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who's so... going to hit me now? <laughs> so, uh, the next one up is one of the rebels that was pushed back. He's going to go 5, 10, 15, 20. And he's going to make uh, three attacks. One against Grisha and two against the captain. Because swashbucklers have a triple multi-attack. I just didn't use it last turn. Because I'm nice. So, Grisha's going to get the dagger. And then the rapier is going to be on Captain Magic. Ooh, that bandit rolled a nap fucking one. So, for Grisha... Yes, he did. Two of them rolled that once. That's a 15 to hit. Miss. Okay. And then the rapier attacks. Uh, these ones have advantage because he's technically flanking with his friend over there. Uh, none of them have advantage on me. Not you, on the captain. Oh. Uh, so man now, one hits, both hit for a total of 16 points of piercing. Boom, boom. Hey, Tarvos is up. He is going to rage. And he's got 40 feet of movement. Oh, no. so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Uh, action to dash. 5, 10, 15. Actually, we'll go 15, 20. He'll get right up there, getting a grid advantage if he wants to. Uh, and that's all he can do. Kinrick. Uh, how yeah. much? How much? Yeah. How damage does the swashbuckler look, of curiosity? Uh, the one directly to your left. The one that that the one that just did three attacks. Decided to cut the captain. Uh, he's he's taken twenty points of damage, uh, but he's not bloody yet. He's looking um, he's looking fairly like fairly rough, like he's shooken up by the whole thunder wave thing. But is the um, dwarf captain still alive? He's not at half yet. There, there's no captain is... among them that you can visibly see. They don't. There's uh, no like distinguishing mark of rank that you can tell from anyone. Mm, uh, Kinrick, you're up. All right. Uh, is the guy who was speaking to our captain still alive? Yeah, he's got pushed back uh, ten feet from the thunder wave. I is he within ninety feet of me? Uh, he is. He is seventy-five feet away from you. Sweet. From a bonus action, I'm going to cast hex on him. Okay. And. Um, am I still able to cast Eldritch Blast? Yeah. Since I hexed him? Mm, yeah, right. hex him boss, actually. yeah, yeah, you can, because, yeah. <laughs> you got two um, rays now. Eld yep, I do, so I'm going to Eldritch Blast him. I am going to use my bar uh, I'm going to use my inspiration that you gave me <laughs> on that second beam. <laughs> cool. So you roll a D8. Wait, what did I give Kenrick an inspiration? You didn't give him. An uh, inspiration. not you. The, I gave oh, him an inspiration. That, that's a plus eight. <laughs> cool. So that's uh yeah those those both hit. Nice. That is two D ten. <laughs> All right. Cool. Oh so Jesus. Seven force damage and. Three necrotic. Uh, what ability and, score does he have disadvantage on, by the way? Uh, let's give him disadvantage on wiz wisdom checks. Yeah, wisdom. Okay, I'll try and keep that in mind. 
which means he has advantage on perception if any of them if any of them decides to be stealthy. Yup, that's true. Grid, you're up. Um, you're surrounded by three people. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and use my necrotic shroud. <laughs> okay. So yes. you watch as a, a, a shadow, like a cape, forms around Grid's upper torso, and then the shadow flashes outward, and two uh, skeletal shadowy wings are formed all around his back. So, oh, I didn't mean that. So they need to make a DC. Oh no, not a. Uh, they need to make a charisma saving throw. So it's a DC yeah, eight so plus that's... my performance or proficiency plus. <laughs> that's fucking my charisma. Everyone. So. Two, the swashbucklers, one bandit, the captain, Grisha, and Tarvos need to all make this check. It's a charisma saving throw, yeah? Yeah. So it's... Okay, swashbuckler. Eight. Charisma save. One. Fourteen. Two. The bandit. Charisma save. Yeah, that that's the one thing I don't like about the Chronic Shroud. It affects friendlies too. Mm -hmm. um. Charisma save for Tarvos. Twelve. And the captain. Charisma. Natural. Oof. So only okay. one of them is not affected. Everybody else is. Uh, which one is not affected? The swashbuckler that rolled the fourteen, unless because it's, it's, it's fourteen. All right, so that's the one directly behind you. Oh, great. So, what happened oh. is, is it's just fear. Frightened until yeah. the end of your next turn. And it lasts for a minute. You can deal extra necrotic damage to a target when you do damage with an attack or spell. It equals your level once you use a straight. You can't deal. Okay, cool. So, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy are all feared. Cool. Awesome. Alright, you're all afraid. <laughs> you're all afraid of grid. <laughs> <laughs> Except for one dude who's like outstandingly brave. So, is spiritual weapon a bonus action that I can cast? Yes. Why are we all afraid of it a is. fucking twink? Yes, it is. It is. So I'm gonna cast spiritual weapon on the guy behind me. Cool. So you have your you have the token for spiritual weapon. Just drag it onto the field. Where you yes, want I to do. Be. Oh, what? It didn't update. Uh, no. The image that you put on there is not the same. You told me that Aww. you were using the piston hammer. So I made it the piston hammer. Oh, right. I forgot about that. I wanted it to be that. Like... <laughs> also, oh, yeah, when you see, it, see that bar, do you see the bar above it? Yeah. So every round that goes by, reduce that bar by one. By one? Yeah, okay. that's the amount of rounds remaining until the spell is gone. So I want to move it to the guy behind me and smack him with it. Okay, you can just make it appear behind you and smack him with it. Okay, yeah, so that's it. Yeah. Roll so it appears like a biome and he's going to roll it. Wall up. See how it goes. Uh, so I can just ping this in chat, right? What level do I cast this at? <laughs> uh, it's at, le at the very least, it's at level two. You can use a it second level or third level slot. One, pick one. I don't think it matters. Third level? Actually, it's, no, not let me, it's not let me pick first or second. It's only let me pick three through nine. For a spiritual weapon? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Uh... Are you out of selling all the spell slots? Hold on. Spiritual... Oh, no. I think I clicked something wrong. I got it. You might have picked spirit guardians, not spiritual weapon. There you go. So you have fucking all sorts of spells now. Uh, it's a nine. That's a miss. Fuck. Alright. Uh, so that's your turn, unless you want to move. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna... Um, remove. I don't know, that would give him an attack of opportunity. They get three people attacks of opportunity. <laughs> they feared, though, I thought. Uh, yeah, they're afraid, but I, don't, I think they can still take reactions. Yeah, can they? Yeah, they, they, just, they just have a like, disadvantage, I think. They just have like, a yeah, disadvantage to attack you. I'm just gonna stay here. disadvantage, but they can still do it. I'm just gonna stay here. Uh. Now. Does this watchbucker have actual metal armor, or is it... Uh, their armor is... Leather. All of them are wearing leather. Well then. Uh, disadvantages on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of its fear is within its line of sight, and it cannot willingly move closer to the source of its fear. 
So they do have disadvantage to hit you if you want to move. Um, but otherwise, it's the bandit's turn. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, it's going to make an attack against Grid. Actually, put these guys in. Scimitar. Normal. 12. Is he rolling against me? Yeah. No, it doesn't hit. Cool. So that's a miss. And now it's the captain's turn. Where is Captain Magical? Captain Magical has some fun shit he can do. He's going to. Uh, he's going to use his rapier on the one directly in front of him. Yes. I'm going to lie this whole time. I thought I'd been saying Captain Magical. Madrigal. 19. 19 hits. Cool. And he does 20 points of damage. Oh, hey, I still have some water left in this can. Because sneak attack is fucking broken. Uh, and then, I think he has, because he's a rogue, he has some shit he can do. Does he have disengage his bonus action? Yes, he does. So he's going to disengage as a bonus action, and then go 5, 10, 15, 20 to go fight this guy on the stairs. Next rebel is the one that's hexed by Kinrick. He's going to go 5, 10... Up to Grisha. Make three attacks. Dave, this event. No, no, I'm just mad. He's not frightened. Never mind. He's not frightened, no. One. <laughs> two and three. Two 16s and an 18. Uh, two of those miss. The, the 18. Yeah, there you 18 go. So meets. five points of piercing damage. That bandit's dead. We're not going to worry about him. Uh, the rebel that Captain Magical went up against is going to take three attacks against him. Dagger, rapier, rapier. E. Uh, here's another fun thing he can do. I think he has uncanny dodge, so he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna have that eleven to a five, and then. He takes six more, so 11 points total piercing damage to the captain. How much damage does the captain look? Uh, captain is, uh, I think he's close to bloody at this point. Uh, the next rebel is going to take three on Glaive. Gla no, he's going to take three on Tarvos, because Tarvos is standing right behind him and he's very big and imposing. Twenty-eight, twenty-three. 23 so two hit four damage and three damage makes seven damage total because of rage next up uh, bandit on grid he's gonna move over there to get advantage on a scimitar attack 21 to hit for six points of slashing yep that guy's dead Oh, you, you're up. I actually got a dip, y'all. I thought you were ready Yay! to go to church. Is there still anybody near me? Okay, who's dipping? Kinrick? Uh, nearest enemy to yeah, I got is uh, 10 feet okay. away. Uh, the nearest just guy, just yeah. Just blast everyone. Ten... We're gonna walk up to enemy and fucking hit. Okay, so there's one that is hexed and one that is not. They're both equidistant from you. I'm gonna go to the non-hexed one. Okay. Slappy slappy. 26? 26. 26 hits. Have a D8. You can add the damage if you so choose. Yeah, I'll have the D8. You also get extra attack and bonus action. Fist yes, I know. Let you know. So that's eleven damage. Okay, so eleven for the first one. Slappy, slappy again. Twenty. Twenty hits. And. Eight damage. Okay. And since he's still not dead, I'll slap a slappy again. Cool. Fifteen. Fifteen misses. Damn it. Cool. Unless you want to try um, 
flurry of blows. That's the end of your turn. Uh, I can't use key points unless I call it at the beginning of the bonus action. Okay, then there you go. Ryan, you're up. Uh, picking up masterwork arrow this time. Re. Uh, first shot's gonna be a masterwork arrow right here. Okay. Uh, this gets an extra plus one to damage and attack. Well, it gets, uh, pl be... it gets plus two to attack, because it's a masterwork arrow, so that's plus one to attack. It's a masterwork arrow and a masterwork bow, or no, on the custom bow. So yeah, so 13 damage. Nice. The issue is I have the longbow plus one, but with like masterwork arrows, I'd have to make a plus three. It's weird. Point being is that I hit. Uh... Yeah, that one guy is looking super rough. <laughs> Uh, Colossus Slayer, I believe. Because he's been damaged. Yes, he has. Very much And so. then, hey, cool. Would he like to get Goading Attack? I believe he would. Uh, that's a Wisdom save, and he's taking an additional extra 2 damage. Oh, damn. Okay, well. Boom, and then fucking... Where's the Swashbuckler? Wisdom save. Normal. Six. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, is he bloody at least? He's very bloody. He's almost dead. Mm, okay. Uh, with normal arrow now, I'm just gonna fucking action surge. Uh, I'm gonna aim at this bad boy right here. Okay. And then we're gonna just. This is a normal arrow, so with a normal plus eleven. Uh, yeah, that hits, and that does all of itself because he's a bandit. <laughs> nice. That guy takes an arrow to the skull, and he's dead. Uh, bonus action, pick up. Normal arrow. Uh, okay. But didn't you spend your bonus action to pick up an arrow already? Or no? No, you didn't. You did oh, you're previous. correct. You did that on I the did. previous turn. Oh, no, you I did. no, you picked up the master turn because I need to do shoot. I need right. to shoot too. All right. right. My bad. James's turn. He's going to do. Uh. 150 feet. With a 20 foot radius. Is it a. Uh, remind me again. 20 foot radius on fireball, yeah? I believe that's 30 foot radius. Radius? Or, no, I think it's 15 foot radius for a 30 foot diameter. Well, let's fucking find out. <laughs> He's gonna try and aim this so he doesn't fucking kill his brother or you guys. 20 foot radius. Both wrong. 20 foot radius. So from him to there, I believe we'll be able to catch these three. It'll also catch his brother, though. So he's going to aim it a little bit to the left of that. So from here on out, these three guys are going to have to make deck saves. See James take a ball of fire in his hand and lob it like a grenade onto the other ship and it makes a gigantic explosion that <laughs> lights the deck of the ship on fire and catches three enemies in the blast. They are going to have to make uh, fucking dexterity saving throws. One, two. And the bandit who is probably going to be dead. He's dead either way. So the bandit just fucking dies and it's incinerated. Because even in half damage, that's more than his hit points. The other two, one of them makes it, takes 13. Uh, that's the hexed guy, so he takes 13 points of fire damage. The other guy takes the full 26 and is KO'd, killed in the blast. Boom. This guy loses all of his hit points because he's a bandit and he sucks. And he's dead as well. Boom. And then James is going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And he's going to be halfway across the gangplank going over to help his brother. Clyde. 
Devin's uh, available. I know. But, I'm, I'm picking which one to attack here. Uh, 5, 10, 15. He's going to try and finish off the guy uh, next to Payula because he's got four fucking HP left. Bite. 10, that's a miss. Cool, so that's the end of the Plink Dog. Grisha. Okay. Wait, did Clyde die? You uh, just said that's the end of the Blink Dog. No, it's just, that's the end of his turn. I'm gonna take out my Ironwood. I'm gonna have my Ironwood Balax out. And I'm gonna watch that too. Try and smack a fucking guy in the face? Yeah, the Hex guy. Go for it. Nice. 19 hits, 8 points of slashing. He's still kicking? Oh yeah. He's looking pretty hurt now, uh, but he's still up. Uh, let's see what kind of is bonus action. Uh, bonus action, I'm going to... Uh... Healing Word. Healing Word, the captain. Yep. Go for it. And so, uh, chanting and jump. Dip, dip, dip. And well, what the fuck? I'll cast that third level. Nice. Nine points of healing. Boom. Very appreciated. Now it's Tarvos' turn. Tarvos has many fun things he can do, one of which is extra attack. With a greatsword. So we're gonna extra attack with the greatsword. Uh, two attacks. Are they at advantage? Yes, technically. Oh god. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> He's dead. So one attack goes through, slashes this guy across the fucking face, and kills him instantly. The other one dismembers the body in half. And then he's going to move 5, 10, 15, 20. So 25, put him up there to get the advantage. Grid is up. Okay. Oh, uh, damn it. Okay. I was going to turn around and kill that guy. Uh, I would like to... So everybody's dead around me. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> You're in a Is this guy still place. alive right here? Uh, yeah, he's still up. Alright. I'm going to... Move here. Nah. I'm going to grab him. I'm going to say fuck you, and I'm going to cast and flank the wood. Okay. Roll the hit. I think it's what level? Well, yeah, inflict wounds is the first level. But you can cast it at whatever level you want to, as long as you have spells, spell slots for that level left. Yeah, we already did two. Cool. Twenty two, 22 hits uh, for enough damage crock. to fucking kill him. And then with my bonus action, chronic shroud damage. Oh yeah, what's that? It doesn't matter. He's dead. I'm gonna move my spiritual weapon. You can move it up here? to 20 feet. You can move it up to 20 feet on a turn. I was the 20th, I thought it was 30. Fuck. Nope. You can get like. Um, there. Okay, then I just, I'll move it there. Okay. You still got your movement left if you want to. You got. Uh, like five. five 10, 50, you got 15 feet of movement left. 15. Move there. Cool. Captain Madrigal looks at the one remaining guy and says, "Do you really want to do this?" And then he's gonna take. <laughs> he's I will gonna take a shot uh, with his rapier. Uh, yeah. Actually, before he does, he's gonna move around for advantage, just to make sure that he hits this guy. Um, you can also see that he's not attacking to kill this guy. He's trying to knock him out. 
Natural 20. <laughs> oh, fuck. Ah. Uh, what is those numbers? Well, 16. he gets laid out. <laughs> well, it's 16 plus 8 15, plus 7. So 31. 31. He's still not down. <laughs> but that's a lot of damage. What? Yeah, he's had 40 something health left. He's got 15 health left now. <laughs> he's he's going to go down. Uh, but yeah, that, that does not kill him, actually. Alright, and it is that guy's turn. Uh, he's just going to fucking drop his weapons and surrender. <laughs> <laughs> All of his friends died <laughs> in like six seconds. He's like, uh, I'm, I'm done. I'm surrendering. Uh, is there anything like else? To imagine Anyone that else wants to do? Captain just fucking kicked him in the gut. And he just goes tumbling back and then falls into some barrels. He's like, alright guys, whatever. He like bopped him on yeah, the head he... with his rapier. He's like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> All of my friends are dead. This isn't fair. Um, so at the that... Ledge. The initiative is over. Combat is done. I pick up my fucking arrows. God, I'm so pissed. <laughs> I make my weapon vanish. At least you didn't drop them uh, all overboard. This is the ocean. Don't remind me. James is going to run up. Uh, and kind of jog over. I'm going to get right next to this guy. Um... Also, by the way, you guys kind of have another problem as this ship is beginning to burn from the fireball. <laughs> certain uh, things yeah, have, I forgot there was fire. Certain things have caught on fire. Um, and at the explosion and sounds of combat, um, several other dwarves run up from out of the galley. Um, they are dressed in like really ragged clothing. Um, they don't look very well kept. Some of them look like malnourished. They haven't been eating a lot. Um, and all of them, every single one of them has that diamond-shaped scar on their forehead. And they uh, begin BG. to, like, crowd the deck. I'm just going to start popping off, pressing station, snuffing up. You can clean up the blood? No, I can actually put out fire. You can put out small fires, right? This oh, is yeah, a 20-foot radius small, fireball. Like, yeah. You can put out, like, small, like branches of fire but you it, it's not like prestidigitation where you can clean a surface area you can't clean a little bit of the fire it snuffs an entire small fire it cannot do part you can light or snuff out a candle a torch or a small campfire those three specifically this is not a small campfire this is a 20 foot radius fireball can that I cast burning a good and third of the ship purple. yes you can change it to purple no you can't because that's not what thaumaturgy does no, nope, like that's Presto. Uh, yeah. Oi, anyone might help us put the fire right quick so we can try to figure out what the fuck's going on? Uh, James might be able to. Let me see if I can fucking find his spell list. Oh my god, his books. <laughs> no. God damn it, every time I look in my inventory, I see something that makes me greatly happy. Um, what he can do is take a take a bucket that's right next to one of the dead guys and then cast fly and with a 60 foot fly speed fly up and down from the ship to the sea gathering water and dumping it on the fires i also like can just do thunderclap and just do that cool scene where just like with the force just snuffs it out like that oh you can change the color of flames okay cool so yeah you can make the flames purple at which point they would be put out <laughs> by james they're purple <laughs> like anyone is that actually even plausible that one, like in TV shows where like there's a fire and they just fucking clap and it and just with the forces. Uh yes, well, the yes, air that would poof it away, but the thunderclap would not. Thunderclap would just fuck. No, no, no. I make it. I make the flames black. Okay. Damn. They're black for a split second before they are doused with water from the flying wizard. Oh. oh hey Devin, how you doing? Like I'm trying to be creative with my spells, but there's only so much I can do. What's up? Thank you for joining us at the end of the tide. Um, so, uh, I don't know. He's muted. No, if he's trying to talk, we don't know what he's saying. He's in roll 20. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, so, essentially, what happened was... What happened was... Uh, two things. You guys avoided a whirlpool. Um, you met a whale that was really, really big for a whale. And then you fought off a bunch of dwarves and killed a whole lot of them. 
Oh, we are back again. Murder. Yeah, pretty much. Murder. Um. So the uh, the dwarf who's currently being captured is like. Oh, this is part of your paying back the debt <laughs> thing. Uh. So the the admiral, uh, one of the one of the council of seven is an admiral and owns a fleet of merchant ships. <laughs> And yeah, when you got I back know. To Idris, a lot happened, Devin. Yeah, when you, a lot can happen in four hours. Um, when you guys got back to Idras, um, Carver was like, cool, on to the next part of paying back your debt. So you're going to be security on this ship because the last ship didn't come back. This ship that you're on right now is the one that didn't come back. So uh, it was taken over by dwarves, apparently. So should we, Poor like, uh, keep this boat? Or, like, are we just going to, like, let it loose... You know, this is just even more reason to not trust short people. I mean, who are you asking? You're, it's you and Kinrick on the other boat. <laughs> Which, at this point, Kinrick's just going to join you on the other one. I'll just Ryan's just on the other one as well. hanging out by himself. And, and I'll ask the them. Place. So, what are we going to do they, about the whole... Uh, uh, Tarvos, we, we, we were killing them because they attacked us. Yeah. Yeah. Blasted their eardrums out with a third level thunder. Well, wave. he asked not. He didn't ask why. He he asked, "Are and are we killing them?" And the answer is no. We're not killing them. They're already dead. Yeah, yeah. they are definitely except dead. for these ones in rags. Apparently, coming up from except the stairs. For one, apparently, oh. one dude. And there's uh, yeah. I need to look up dwarf real quick. Let's see if I can't find the. Uh... So are we gonna like keep this ship? Like the full um, I would like to point out that there was a thing. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use these guys. Yeah, the people that were in rags. So he was, but he was saying anything about that before we interrupted him multiple there, times. There are people in rags coming up from the bottom of the ship. Uh, there's about ten, ten other dwarves that come coughing and sputtering up to the deck to get fresh air. Yeah, as, as the wizard and uh, Goliath are still putting out the fire. Pretty much, yeah. Eventually the fire is put out um, and the captain begins to interrogate uh, the the captured warrior. Can I help him? Uh, what do you say? No, I'm like, I mean, he still has a necrotic shroud no, up, he's a scary ask, motherfucker. Please. But it only lasts for a minute, so that by now the necrotic shroud is gone. The issue hmm. is that the ship is apparently unsupplied, so. Um, what are these dwarves doing? These ones that are in rags, are they doing anything? Are they just sitting there watching us? I mean, they're, they look frightened um, and, like, scared for their lives. Uh, uh, they look very confused. Um, and just very worried in general. They're all kind of huddling together in a group, like whispering amongst themselves. Who was the last one to have the Everloaf? Uh, you, I think. You. Nice. Okay, cool. I'm gonna start breaking off pieces of the Everloaf, handing, handing a few of them out to these guys, and then I'll take, like, you said ten of them? Yeah, there's ten of them. Fuck it, I don't ever use my fucking rations. They can have it all. Okay. So they, them each. they, like, take handfuls of rations, and some of them begin eating, like, ravenously, like they haven't eaten in days. Yeah, any of them look like any kind of uh, any injuries or sicknesses on them? Uh, they look pretty ragged or worn, but in terms of, like, illness specifically, make a medicine check. <laughs> they so probably have I get... I'm gonna put my hand on this. Um, you can't tell. This guy right here, or whoever is this guy is. I'm gonna tell him to tell the captain to tell everything, or you can end up like your friend. Okay, make an intimidation check. I'm gonna. <laughs> if he doesn't, I'm gonna put <laughs> flake the wounds on him. Uh, intimidation. Yeah. Stop. Um, he looks at you and he's like I I can't tell you everything it's just not possible 
Like, all I all I know is that we're we're not trying to to do anything. We just wanted to to get out of Gorgon House and move on to somewhere else. That's all we wanted. And this ship seemed like the best way to do that. And your first thought when you came across the original owner of the ship and getting found caught for taking it was to try and was to attack us. Look, man, the orcs have shit everywhere. They have spies and agents of all kinds all over the planet. All over the, not the planet, all over the continent. I can't trust anybody. Especially not with these folk here behind me. We're all fairly defenseless. None of them, we told none of them to use their magic just in case something weird happens. Anyone here have any outstanding injuries, or sicknesses, ailments? Um, one of the, one of the dwarf, like, raises his hand. He's like, it burns when I pee sometimes. I don't think this is helping that might. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to, like, do like a bop on the head and bust the restoration. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh. Anything actually pressing? I don't know. I was like, is the captain going to ask me anything? Because I was just like, just answer the captain's question or you die. But I was leaving it up to you guys, but I'll leave up to the captain as well. No, no. I was telling him, answer the captain's questions or I can kill you. Oh, okay. Either way it works. uh, Captain says, well, I think we're good. And what made you think it was a good idea to attack the Admiral's vessels again? Also, how in the world did you get past the security? I mean, you're skilled, but I don't think you were that skilled to to take the fortune all by ourselves. Just Can Charles do an intimidate check to maybe persuade him? I, the grid's already done one. That's pretty effective. Intimidation check to persuade. My favorite line of dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guy on the ground says, Look, I, we didn't take it by force. We took it in the dead of night when all the other crew were in port. All it took was taking out the guards, leaving them on the dock, and then we sailed away. That's all that happened. We didn't kill anybody among your crew. We just left them stranded in a hostile environment. That's all what happened. I'm going to narrow my eyes at him. I would like to tighten my grip on him and go, is that the truth? He's like, ow! Fucking yes. Uh, Damn it. But why the hell would I lie to you, folk? You, you outnumber me like eight to one right now. I don't know. And you killed all know. my friends. This, this seems pretty sus. You've all got magic. I don't stand a chance. Come on now. Fair enough. Uh, Hello. What do you want to do with him, Cap? <sighs> Living up to you. We could throw them overboard, they we they can't, you know, do anything. We might need the extra bodies for sending the vessel back though. Like they're going to help us. And it's not like all of them are exactly guilty. If we run on the food we just cannibalize them. You are a surprisingly dark little thing, aren't you? I I suppose. If I may make a suggestion. Uh, what is it, mate? You all want to escape the Gorgon House, right? Well, yeah, that's the reason why we left. As you can tell, we're not slaves anymore. See, here's the issue. We need to take both backs to Gorg- both boats back to Gorgon House, no matter what. We... Oh yeah, I forgot to wash our sleeves over there. The God. fact that the fact that you are even here, you are the which means you've already done our job. We've got the cause of why the last ship didn't come back. That's we not our job. Our to... job is security, you dumbass. It was also to figure out why. I imagine no, that was a out. bonus. This is the job, and I point to the fucking other boat. I point towards a uh, ruby. Ruby. the points. Yeah. 
Listen, Paul, really. we got our fucking bonus, but we need to get back a surfing. We need to go, uh, sorry, no. We need to go to Gorgon's house to get Grim. this ship supplied and to drop off our cargo on the ruby stone. Grim's so both kind of these... ignoring you at this point and is, talk, and is just looking at Grid. What? Both these boats need to go get the fucking Gorgon house, say so. Grid. Yeah. Well, uh, the Admiral... It seems like we need a full, two full oh. teams. Do we have full, two full teams? The to Admiral wouldn't... Or the boss, or whatever. I can't remember the name at the moment. They wouldn't be... He wouldn't be against having extra hands, would he? Um, probably not. Willing to work off their debt? Similar. Irony, I can already, I can already, I can feel you glaring at me, Orion. I'm aware of the. <laughs> I mean, that's gonna be up to him, mate. Not my job. <laughs> he likes to use extra hands, so. Technically, these are property of the Admiral now, or this is the purview of the Admiral, rather. Yeah, like I said, we're kind of on Cap's territory. So, so whether, or not, say, whether or not Carver McGuinn sponsored this venture or not, these people are under my control. My well, jurisdiction. I'm just going to suggest similar situation to other understood parties. They work off their debt. See, here's the difference. We can't just fucking leave them alone. These people don't owe a debt. They didn't fight they us. They really don't. It this one like did. The others paid with their lives. They've been paid with years of slavery. This one with yes, the I'm also, uh, stabbing so knives is the one that needs to pay me a debt no for my so. bloody shoulder. Listen, I hate the fucking orcs as much as the next person. I, but this is this is just fucking ridiculous. But the dwarves well, attacked yeah. Serpent House. Not they, they. They did an evil thing to Serpent House. And they left Serpent House people stranded for their own game. Like, listen, I I understand why they did it, but it was evil. And no one can truly tell me that it wasn't. Well, he's got a point, Tack. There's also a counterpoint. Desperate Access. times can draw a good can drive good men to do bad things. I don't care if they're fucking good or not. They left my people stranded for their own game. And you can't tell me that that isn't just self-preservation -pres and it's evil. All right, let me ask you this. Would you have done it different if you were in their shoes? Yes. Can you also nope. say that? I would you have know, killed all I probably crew. wouldn't, but I'd have to accept the consequences. And right now, I'm not saying we toss them fucking overboard. But we need to, we can't treat them like people right now. We need to treat them like prisons. I thought that's what we did. I mean, most of the time people are prisoners, so we just, you know, kind of. Yeah. Well, while while I appreciate your enthusiasm, it is not your call to make. It is my call to make. You are not the captain of this ship, nor any other ship, as far as I know. You're right, Captain. Sorry. Hi. The refugees will be taken back to Serpent House and dealt with by the Admiral herself. This one, for assaulting me, will most likely have to face justice when we get back to port. And we can always pick up the crew of the fortune that was left in Bardego, I suppose. Assuming they haven't He's all drunk so themselves alive. to death by now. So, no uh, harm, no foul. Nobody died except those who needed to. Yeah. At this, the uh, the dwarf on the ground winces a little bit. Like, man, you asshole. <laughs> I'd say all in all, this was a profitable venture, don't you? I mean, we literally captured fortune, so I guess so. Good. Then, uh, if you wouldn't mind... I'm going to make an out-character joke, because... And also, I can't make that much. Yes, I'm the joke that most people get, because that, that solace isn't here. He did say he would go back to Rob's Rob's if he happened to get, get a hold of a small fortune. This isn't a small <laughs> fortune, though. It's a pretty big one. <laughs> it's a big ship. It also doesn't belong to you. I, I, I know, but he did say when he, if he came across a small fortune, so... Okay, so. You know, 
Now, if you wouldn't mind, grab a couple of the crew and give these bodies a proper burial. Let's see. I don't know your customs, so. I, usually, like you kind of bury from, them in the sea. It's kind of from cool. Serpent House. Don't you know that we bury people at sea who die at sea? No. He hasn't been on my boats much. It's more me. Land rangers. All right. Swamp, more like. Well, either way, grab some crew. They know what to do. Just follow their directions. Right. You ten. Follow me, please. Raggedy, One at a time people. across the gangplank. Let's move. And I'm looking at these like raggedy guys, like once, once scared, over, checking them. The scared masses, um, uh, now under the the control of the captain, kind of do what he says. They really don't have a choice at this point. They all shuffle well, um, one over the gangplank. Get the scared masses, I'm looking like once over for any other injuries, like or anything that is actually worth noting. I mean, other than the obvious scarring. Um, and what appears to be years of abuse put on each of their bodies from being slaves and all that stuff. Um, nothing egregious that you need to deal with. It's mostly lasting trauma, like scar tissue and, and being frightened. And it doesn't around. look like these guys could have, the, like these specific ones in the rags could have honestly been any been of any real use. They probably just, the, uh, the other guys that were armed shepherded them onto the boat after they cap took it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. But these guys, these guys took over the boat with the express purpose of ferrying refugees out of the out of Gorgon House. That's basically what he told you. That's all he's told you so far. Now the captain um, uh, takes the um, the one on the ground by the shoulder, uh, pretty firmly. He says, "All right, you two. You have to stand like spending right here. some time in the brig, my friend. You can think about what you've done. He says with like a, a wry smile. Out. I'm no not worry. mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure Durin and uh, and Avora won't reprimand you that hard for doing this. We'll but measures like had right to be taken. And oh, sorry, no, 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 no. Um, and he leads him off. Uh, the the dwarf in question, uh, at the mention of Durin and Avora's names, um, seems a little, <laughs> a little like defeated, like ah oh, fuck, this guy knows what's up, <laughs> and he's led across the gangplank and down into the bowels of. Oh, the fuck, I'm not Roth. I can't ask that. Damn it. Well, I'll gather crew and drop bodies into oceans. <laughs> Though uh, before any of that, like as they're crossing, I'm also. Uh, have my axe and this, like head. They head of the axe on the rested on the deck. Just kneel. Okay. Uh, the prayers of the spirits. So, at the uh, at the end of this uh, voyage, you guys are you have ferried the refugees on. They're all they've all been given uh, food when it is supper time. Uh, the cook. Uh, gr grumbling to himself under his breath <laughs> because he has to make food for ten more people now. Um, but nonetheless, you manage to um, essentially lash the fortune to the back of uh, the ruby star and tow it the the rest of the way into port. Now, it does take uh, an extra couple days uh, it's lower pace travel to get to Bar Bardego from where you met the ship in the first place. Um, but eventually, I mean, it is more way, but at the same time, it has more sails. Eventually, on the fourth, on the fourth day, it doesn't look like that. Without a crew, a ship can't sail very well. On the fourth That's day, the... Um, you do see uh, on the horizon uh, a collection of uh, sandstone buildings along the shoreline uh, in a small port that is uh, the city of Bardego in Gorgon House. And that's where we're going to end today's session. Yeah. Yeah, have a good night, guys. Good night. So we'll pick up again next I'm gonna week. I'm going to assume we're not level 6. No, you're not. Not yet. Yeah, as I, I was going to assume we're not. <laughs> not until I tell you. So I'll pick up next week. I'll see you guys later. And uh, yeah, happy hunting. Congratulations on making it to the most hostile territory 
in the entire world. <laughs> I'm also liking the, the kind of tension it's building in the party. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like next session, maybe half of words of the ride. Yeah. I think all of us want to fucking murder each other at least a little bit. If not words, fists. One that and the fact that you guys are taking a prisoner who the captain knows something about that you don't, obviously. You've got Kayla him to talk to. He doesn't want to kill Grisha, he just wants to beat the shit out of her in a friendly match. <laughs> Which you probably could. Either way, um, we'll pick it up again next week. See you later. <laughs>